I was a fucking shite Elwyn, man. Aye. Oh my god, what shit. I remember one time I was arguing with my sister once and then she was running a bath and I was raising I went in and I fucking pulled my trousers down and shat in a bath. As you go into secondary, that kind of thing, you start caring what people think. That's where all these mad kind of, these thought patterns develop because people are judging you and all that kind of stuff and you're like, oh, fuck, I'm seen as a geek because I was doing no. good at my grades and that kind of stuff. So I just started acting like a fucking idiot. When I went into like secondary, I just started pure I didn't have time just shouting, bamming up the teachers, doing shit like that. I just tried to be funny. I just grabbed him, just started stabbing him with his blade. But it was weird, it was like I was drunk, so I, I kept, I stabbed him a good few times, but I didn't feel like I was stabbing him. Right, I'm in here for the fucking, I remember getting back to my cell and it was still in Blair House at the time, and we were sitting down like that, right, I better get cosy then. I'm in here for the long haul. Try day, and we're on. And we're back, Darren. Yes, we are. And today we have got Jordan Robertson, Hawaii 5 0. Mere names than Muhammad Ali. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you that one. <laughs> Jordan, thank you very much for coming on. Cheers uh, for having us, guys. Obviously, me and Darren are brothers. You just found that out. He's ah, like, he's looked like each other. I know, I know. Like brothers, think, Jordan. I know. I had the cheeky well, shot. They look like a fucking double each other. Uh, <laughs> and you're this mad TikTok sensation. Yes. Um, I'm a couple of things. TikTok sensation is probably one of my polite names, aye. But I did it a bit on TikTok, did a podcast, that. Done a documentary just there, man. So I just a lot of fucking bragging rights nowadays. I'm just Good. trying to build that ego up, know what I mean? As you do. <laughs> as you do, Jordan. Listen, me and Darren are brothers. I as you know, so we always like to get back to kind of family at the beginning and start your story there. So tell us, what was it like? So uh, growing up, as far back as I can remember, I've always stayed in Cardonald. I don't know if you know, it's the south side of Glasgow. Yes. It's, uh, it's, it's an all right kind of area. It's, it's got a schemey part <laughs> and it's got, see Cardonald, it's full of people that earn the fair there. Right. It's all cunts that have got a bit of money then went and bought a house there. So they're off a different area. So my dad's for Govan and my ma's for Royston. Right. Fun enough, my dad's family are all Celtic fans and my ma's family or Rangers fans. How about you? Uh, no. Well, at the time, I would be, well, I'd be a Celtic fan depending who I was staying with. <laughs> depending on the fence. Depending on the fence. I was parked in the fence. I wasn't sitting there. I didn't have a choice. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't old enough to have a cognitive decision. You know what I mean? So if you want to stay here tonight, you're wearing the Rangers tap. It was, it was bad. You know what I mean? It was bad. It was traumatic. But, uh, it, once upon a time, I was a Celtic fan. I was a Celtic. I went to the games and that yeah. kind of thing. But I fell away from it. But uh, as I say, I came back. Far back I can remember, Stephen Cardonald. I'm uh, the youngest. I've got a brother, my sister, my brother. Fucking need to edit this out. I don't know their exact ages. Oh no! Uh, my That's no in his edited it. My, my brother's in his forties. My sister's in her, her late thirties. She might be nearly forty. Fuck no, she's no nearly forty. I'll go for the younger bracket. Right, I mean, I don't yes, get my boss yes, kicked. Yes, yes. Uh, Safe bet. So, uh, so I was the youngest. Know what I mean? So it was me. Like I'd an older brother, an older sister, but I basically two mas and two dads. Know what mm -hmm, I mean? Six mm -hmm. times the baby, the family. But uh, when I was young, I, my, I used to get called Devil Child, man. I was a fucking shite away, man. Aye. Oh my God. Like, she, I remember one time I was arguing with my sister once and then she was running a bath and I was raising. I went in and I fucking pulled my trousers down and shat in a bath. No shit way, like Jordan. No I used way. to go missing and all that shit, man. I was a pure ADHD. I used to run away from my dad when he couldn't get his nursery. He'd be like, I'm not going to get him again. You I shat fucking your sister, beast. Mate, you shat your sister's bath. Aye, man. And what that, age was that? Ah, uh, yeah. fucking about, maybe about three or something, three, four. I was old enough to do a big shite anyway because it was yeah. a fucking belter. It was like, it was that size, man. It was massive. But sitting with it right off, oh, it was a fucking. And see, it was one of That's when I knew it was a fucking weird thing. My mom, like, they, they weren't even angry. See, that way they were just kind of disgusted that kind of way. It was like, they didn't even tell yeah. me half because, like, what the fuck is wrong with this cunt? No way. So I think that was the first sign. I was always different as a, a Wayne in that. And uh, I just, it was just a typical childhood and that. The way to stay, my man dad split up eventually. I don't really remember that. I just remember one minute I was staying in the house, next minute I was staying in a flat, and I thought it was brilliant, like, yes, I'm in a flat. But uh, my ma, obviously, she took on me and my sister, and she a single ma, so she didn't have much money coming mm -hmm. in and that, and food and that, that was quite scarce in the house and that kind of stuff. And my ma was quite overprotective, kind of way. She used to worry a lot, man, so she didn't really let me out the house much. Like, I couldn't really just go out and fucking play with people. Aye, mm -hmm. because I was away in college up there. I think she thought I'd be running about the ring mob. She was just, just trying to look after you. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Looking back, you know what I mean? She'd just been a mom, you know what exactly. I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, I did. I spent a lot of time in the house uh, growing up and that kind of stuff. And uh, I just I used to read a lot and that kind of thing. And uh, I, as I started getting into secondary school, I was really good. 
doing good grades and that kind of stuff. I was really dedicated. I was a teacher's pet, you could say. Were you? Aye. Aye. For being that ADHD way and then being able to sit and down and read books. Uh-huh. Well, that's class. Well, that's the thing. It's because I spent a lot of time in the house. I just ended up taking a thing for reading and I think it's like, because I'm one of the people, I've got a mad obsessive mindset. So see if I get into something, I'm fucking all into it. So I think in my head, I go into my head at that point, right? Dane Brilliant at school. So I used to like, race people to finish my work first. Shit like that. I was doing really good. Then, eh, uh, and you stole like that, and now Jordan, do you carry that, that on? That obsessive to mindset. Yes, aye, yes. aye, 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 right. aye. No, 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 fucking really good at doing grades of that anyway. <laughs> I, mean, I still read. I still. I've started reading again, man, which is good. But uh, as I went into secondary, I was. You know what it's like. You leave primary, go into secondary, man. All that. See that kind of we got child fucking mentality. Everything's Close brilliant and all that. That imagination. I gets no doubt. You know what I mean? Because you're welcome to the real world. So I went in and I did get a bit of a hard time when I went into secondary just because when I left primary, I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh cards and all that shit. That pure wild imagination. Mm-hmm. I thought this is brilliant. And I went in the first year and you know what it's like. You go into secondary, suddenly it's just a different ball game. So and the fact in, that you've always been kind of a house boy as well, your mum reading and that, then that's a big open world. That's big, the thing, because people were going out, people were going out, and no, I mean, they were learning, because you're hanging about with other range, you're learning, don't get me wrong, I, I could I could go to somebody's house, say, like if it was my dad would drop me mm-hmm. off at his pal's house, and I think about with their way, I could do that, but it would have to be pre-arranged and all that shit with them. Yeah. I couldn't yes. just get up and go out the house, which was a bit of a pain in the ass. So if somebody f- if was out doing something, let's say if like, his mom and dad was away out for the night or something, then I couldn't go there. So times I would get to the Friday and that, then I'd be like, I can't leave this house. And it was kind of fucking, it was like, and you think that, see, the thing uh, is, so, sorry, Danny, and if folk think that isn't bad just stuck in a house, but that can be hard. See, we know your, your, your mates are outside. I remember when we were younger and you were grounded, the, 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 again, your mum and dad would just try to look out for you. But we we did get out quite a bit. There were times when, when you weren't out and see that stuck in, that that that, that can get to you. That can get to you. Even as a child when you don't think it is, you're not getting the the, the, the same kind of skills that the rest of the brains are going to get when they get into secondary school. Exactly. Look, look, interaction, you interact with people, you learn, that's how you kind of grow in that. I was spending a lot of time myself, my sister, she was my much older so she could come and go as she pleased right, so okay. it wasn't as if we were in similar age groups I could hang about with her mm-hmm, I was a mm-hmm. lot younger so my sister built a lot my mum worked night shifts so if she wasn't even out working at night she was in her bed sleeping which is fair enough I well, worked night course. shifts so you're just trying to catch up she worked in a nursing home so it was quite a demanding job so there's times I just I, I did my computer but it was just times I was like ah it's like you get to that point in your age you get restless and obviously mm-hmm. I used to be that ADHD way and wanted to go and run about so I wanted to go out and that kind of stuff but I did feel like being trapped at the time mm-hmm. but as I went into secondary you know as you go into secondary that kind of thing you start caring about people think that's where all these mad kind of these thought patterns develop because people are judging you and all that kind of stuff and you're like oh, I want to I'm seen as a geek because I was doing no. good at my grades and that kind of stuff. So I just started acting like a fucking idiot when I went into like second year. I just started pure I don't know, I turned just shouting, bamming up the teachers, then shit like I just try to be funny so people, that, so people would was, was that just me? to get attention, you think, mate? Because aye. obviously you had that kind of secluded kind of childhood, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aye, that's exactly it. Because I've seen it in school, because at school, like going to secondary, it's, it's like, well, and you're in primary, you've got your, there's two classes in your year. And you pretty much know everybody, and everybody knows you because it's such a small. What is it like mm-hmm. thirty people in a class mm-hmm. or two mm-hmm. classes? Mm-hmm. When you go to secondary, it's, there's so many more people, and obviously you're getting older, you're fucking, you're going through puberty course, and all yeah. that, and you're wanting birds to like you know. But you, I was seen as like a geek and all that kind of thing, so. I was like, ah, no, I want to get, get that attention. That was your way to change your image, flinging a rubber, shouting. Doing stupid yes, shit, just yes. acting like a fan, mm. and just getting Similar people to laugh. I, I, just, I can relate, because that's acceptance. the way I was. Nah, I just, I'm sure we've all done it at some point as well. 100%, it was a class clown, but that class clown gave me an image and a, 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 a fitted in in that group. That was Jordan. Aye. Are you with me? Ah, uh, exactly, man. The curse of the name. Ah, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, aye, so, so, so when I started getting into second year, I kind of just lost interest. I was mm-hmm. like, I tell them, I was like, these teachers, I think I I'd built myself up as <laughs> these teachers, these teachers, they like be all and end all and all, they know everything. And I was like, ah, wait a minute, a maths teacher just knows maths because they've studied maths. And, right, and as you go on it with other subjects, I'm like, ah, they fucking cunts don't have a clue. That was my thing at the time. So I was like, ah, fuck this then. Like, second year, usually cunts fuck about going to second year, then they start taking it seriously. Mm-hmm. I don't know the other way about. So I took it seriously till second year when it mattered going into third year. And I was like, ah, fuck this. That's mad, don't They were even saying this. They were actually opposite. going like this at some point. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, the teachers and that. And I was like, I just didn't give a fuck. Aye, you're wasting your talent here, Jordan. What you doing? Aye. So as. In I the, never heard that. I never heard the talent. <laughs> I was dyslexic <laughs> as well. So I was just. I was just. <laughs> I, 
Don't, 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 she was getting, your mum, I, well, or, it was running about I, that. Was she was a reaction to that because she was a protective yeah, one, wasn't Yeah, she? because you were this child, you'd done really well at primary school, then you were into secondary school, and it just went fucking Pete Tong, basically. <laughs> I don't think she really had much left an idea because I never told her anything that I could be. Yeah. See, uh, you know what it's like with working class families? There's a lot of stresses and that and house and that kind of thing, and I felt as if I couldn't speak to them about my problems because I always get moaned at. That's mm -hmm. what I thought is that how I'd felt it, I'd built up my head. So I would pretend everything was rosy. But around about that age of 13, 14, first, second year, I was able to go and start hanging about with people. I could mm -hmm. go and hang up, but I'd say, listen, I'm going to so and so's house, but I'd leave my own two feet, which was a big thing. But that's when I started hanging about with like, like kind of gangs yes. and that. Aye. So was that the gang fighting thing? And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is brand. And I yeah. thought I was the man, you know what I mean? That kind of fucking feeling and that. So it was times I'd be like getting taken home for the post and all that kind of stuff for stupid shit. And uh, I think she was starting to kind of notice. Then I was just kind of my attitude. She could see it dipped in that kind of thing. And, a few times we'd argue and that. And then I remember I actually had this conversation with her quite recently. She mm -hmm. did say to us, she was like, uh, uh, she would always be honest because she knew I had potential to do yeah, well, but yeah. I was just, because for me personally, I felt as if I was getting my freedom. I was able to go out and do what I want. And I think we go through that. It's that rebellion stage, you know what I mean? We all it. So I just went through that period. I dabbling in a school, just drifting through a school and that, then got to like fourth year. Done my exams, I actually done all right in my exams, that's the thing. I, I was still able to do all right, even though I didn't apply myself. But I remember I was in English, I was always quite good at English. I think that's for all the reading I used to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, the teacher fucking hated me because I, was, I, was, I just used to bam it up and that. So she put, back then it was like standard grades, so it'd be like a one to seven, like a one, two would be a credit, that's your top yeah, marks. Yeah, yeah. Three, four general, mm -hmm. that's midway. And five, six foundation, that's your kind of bottom, and mm -hmm. a seven's a fail. Mm -hmm. So she predicted me a five for my like, exams, like my fourth year exams. And I got a two, I got a credit, and I went back into the class. Now, I didn't say the words get it up you, but that was my kind of, are you predicting me a five? Mm -hmm. She was like, ah, listen, she's like, ah, I know you've, sure you've, you've got, got the skill, but she's like, you just don't apply yourself. And then <clears> I came back, hers was a credit class. So when you went, I think it's when you went in a fifth year or something, or if you went back after the exams. Uh, you would get put back into that class if you got a credit mark. So by rights, I should have went in that class. So I was like, I'm going back for fifth year. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I didn't have a job. I didn't have an idea what no, I wanted to do. So I was like, I'll go back to school. I'll get some laugh. Another year of bamming the teachers up. Obviously fifth year, when it's all serious, people are trying to get like hires and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So everybody's knuckled down. Every kid's matured. Yes. I was still pure like, immature. So I went back and then she just went like, listen, this is a credit class, but I don't want you in my class. Fucked us at the class. Really? My, my ass didn't even hit the seat. Nah, I packed us in the next class and it was an art teacher and she just didn't like it. Cause I had to piss at them, know what I mean? Like, Aye. People were sitting knuckling down, I'm trying to get a laugh. It's what, fifth year, can't you get the blue ties? And the prefect man just all that shit. They're all knuckling down, I'm sitting trying to get a bam up, parked to the front. So fifth year didn't last very long and uh, I get invited to leave. Oh, <laughs> invited to leave well, that invite, no, they, they, what, they leave, leave, leave the class or leave uh, school, school. school. Well, they says I was just fucking about and then the mad there's like a pastoral care teacher her name was Mrs Black she was like ah, right we're not basically tolerating this shit like you don't need to be in this school it's no bylaw you can we can pop you out know what I mean we don't have to go through a procedure mm -hmm. and she says but and she worded it in that way like oh, if you leave uh, you're actually making the decision to leave if uh, you decide see that way just aye, put it on aye, me aye. Oh, oh, obviously that yeah. oh, that, oh, that. so I end up just fucking patching it and then she's like I phoned my ma saying right he's, he's made his decision he's uh, le left the school and all no, that shit pushed, man. Uh, so that was me mm -hmm. but I was like right turned 16 and that way you turn 16 you're like you can't tell me what to do I'm fucking 16 well, I'll no, do what I, I want mm -hmm. Aye, so that was me going about you and it was around about that time I didn't really drink during my teenage years I drank once when I was like 14 and uh, it was like a two litre of pulse cider that's what it was fucking horrible I drank it I was mad with it I was steaming I can't remember it it was like that never again that's, that's yeah. what I was like I used to I used to get the cider when we're talking and everyone starts and the cider. I was steaming uh, yeah. but just to fit in uh -huh. but then that soon the drink's going to be I did pull, pull the out <laughs> and came back yeah, that's fucking, what I used to do yeah, I did, that's where the fucking the good acting and they all used to do you know what I mean? I, everybody in the gang used to then keep an eye on me like my mates, where's he going to the toilet? Wait, you pull that out? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I got to help you if you get caught pulling your nose out of the eyes, man. Fucking that. hell. So you but, only really drank up until that, right? Nah, no, at all, so, man. And so I used to. When but I was, see the people you you were you were running about with. Uh -huh. Were they drinking? Well, when I go to like f into fifteen and that, like they were they were starting to drink, right. and mm -hmm. I didn't drink. And I, you were refusing. Aye, yeah. And I was kind of 
seen as a mad weirdo yeah because i never drank maybe i was a bit of a weirdo in fucking other aspects but with that i just didn't drink i just because i had that one experience i was like never Fuck again mm-hmm. then I can't remember, I think it was about 15, and I just thought one week, I was like, I know what, I had some money, and I was like, ah, fuck, I'm just going to get a booze. It was last Sunday, it was pure pish and rain. There was, there was <laughs> it's no, funny how you remember all the details. I don't know what I remember, because there was no motivational fact. It wasn't a sunny day, there was no sorts of concern. I had made the plan on like a Wednesday, I was like, ah, fuck it, this weekend, and I went out on the Sunday. I think I, think I might have went to a Celtic game on the Saturday, and I never used to go after that, because I had to be home for nine and all mm-hmm. that shit, so I was 15 at this point. So uh, I went and chat my pal and got a fucking bottle of Buckfast, and I remember drinking it and I was just drinking that full time, like that fucking, right? It was like, see, waiting on it, just me going that mad, pure steaming wine on it. And then it's like, you better not end up paralytic. I'm like, oh, I'll be one of the paralytic ones. Because I didn't know me mad with because I've been mad with once. Yeah, yeah. And the one time I was all at the camp. But uh, I drank that and then we just, and I just, I felt that way. I was able to commit my shell mare. Right. I was able mm-hmm. to be funny, hit out with Parter before I was dead quite. Well, I don't know reserved in that mm-hmm. kind of sense. I feel mm-hmm. as if I could be myself now. Mm-hmm. I'll maybe be what I thought I was being myself. So I was kicking about and then getting a laugh and then people, I was connecting with people there. So the people hanging about me were starting to like me there because I was maybe cooling up my share yes. a bit more. I was mm-hmm. being more relaxed. Yeah. I was a bit more uptight before. So for then I just started getting a drink in that. And it wasn't anything mental. It was just like, I'd get a drink at the weekends whenever there was drink. I wouldn't sit and go and get a drink myself and that kind of thing. Get like a blow of mad dog. Or I'd go through a period drink mad dog and be buck fast. Mm-hmm. And it would be, it would, it would fluctuate. Socially, just in your room. Socially, there was, Aye, it, of I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever class it as a problem at any point. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, when I was about 17, I was, do, I was doing this, just floating through life, just a fucking pure waste. I wasn't even signing on or nothing. Didn't have a job. I was just sitting fucking, staying with my ma. She was on my case about getting a job and that. And I was just like, ah, fuck you. And my head, no, I mean, I was like, ah, are you rebelling? Of so course. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You're at that age, you've left school, you're like, well, I've left school, I've just done all that, I should be able to sit and in And I jump about with the best boys about here, that, so they know the best. Uh, it's all that. Uh, you know, you know, yes, everything at that age. You know everything. Yeah, you know. And so you're like, I was like, ah, fuck off and that. And then uh, I started kind of seeing this lassie, and that's, it kind of went a bit tits up. That's another thing, seeing I start fucking getting into birds, see if I space if I like a bird, mm-hmm. if I'm into her. Uh-huh. I obsess her. No, in a weird way, just, I can't <laughs> stop thinking about her and that shit. Then I find that arguing with my fucking head's fried and all that shit, and it just ends up one of one. So I end up seeing this lassie, and she was toxic as fuck. Her head was fucking, ah, uh, she's got like fucking three wins to five guys. It's fucked. Right. It's mental, right? And none of them's yours, Jordan. None of them's yours. Nah, nah, thank fuck. <laughs> fucking so. That scene her kind of on and off and then I, as time went on, she was just a pure heat fucking that and then I ended up in a, a relationship and I quote unquote that because at the time we were, at, we're in a relationship together. And you're still roughly about 17, 18 at uh, that point. 17, yes, 17, yes. man. So that was after the toxic one, this is one that you're thinking. No, this is the same one. Right, oh, this yeah. is the same right, one. Right, right, right. So, this, right. so I end up in a fucking relationship with this dad bastard. So I'm obviously the dad bastard, right? So I end up what I thought was a relationship and that kind of thing. Then I remember one night, yeah, uh, I was at a party and I was with a couple of my pals. I was thinking about the boys that are a few bit older. And she was just starting this shit. See, she was just start, see, whenever I was being nice to her, I try to well, obviously be what I thought was a boyfriend to her, she would rip the piss out of us. But if I patched her, she would come chasing us. Do you mm-hmm. see that way up your mm-hmm. cat and mouse thing? And I remember this night, she was just pure gain as shit. And then uh, fucking I was at a party and I was with my pal and uh, his bird at the time, which was this lassie I was seeing sister. So I must explain that, right? You yes, find that, right? right? Yes, just because just, yes. just, just there was a couple of fucking Hingley's descriptions flung in there. I wasn't sure if it was confusing. But uh, so we're at this party, everything's brand new. And uh, I end up getting back in a taxi with my pal and his bird, the, the last ever seen sister. sister. We're getting back to her house, and uh, this last ever seen, she's messages like uh, There was this guy at this party, and uh, he told her that I was firing into her sister, which was my pal's bird. I'm mad with it, and this was the one of the first nights I'd ever took gear. But oh, so this was I, Charlie I started, on the... I, well, when I was about 16, I just started taking Ekkies. And mm-hmm. I loved a good Ekkie, like, I mean, a wee white offer. I used to love an Ekkie. Loving I mean, everybody. I remember, I, I remember, I love everybody, I've annoyed you tonight, mate, just tell us all that shit, man. Loving it, I hug, hugging cuts, hugging myself <laughs> and that, man. But it was fucking, uh, I never touched gear of that. I remember a couple of older, I remember taking a line of gear once, with like, a few older ones, when I was like, taking Ekkies, I was like, that's shit, that's no... I was the same, by the way, my first level line, I remember it. Uh, 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 and, and that's what I thought. I said, this, all the money for that. Ah, crap, man. Aye, because you're used to that buzz. Uh, uh, and the ecky coming on, coming for your toes up. Where, aye, aye. I, was, I was similar to you just when you said that. Aye, so the first time I took it. I wish it, I'd fucking kept it. Oh, that way. I know, I know. I think every kid says that. They couldn't enjoy their first line. It's fucking, it's mental, man. But uh, 
I so the first time I took it was obviously it was during a wee AK period, man, and if I took it, I was like, that's fucking nothing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then I was at this party, obviously I wasn't taking AKs, and a guy offered to in the toilet, and I was like, he's it, and he gave me a five. It was back when it was the crumpled note five, so you know the plastic ones you get nowadays. The, the blood, blood, the yeah. blood, 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 <laughs> blood <laughs> on the head, this is a console five, and I have blood for fucking like the 80s or something. <laughs> Pure bits all ripped and all that shit, you're yeah. throwing it, and it's like a fucking that. Oh, I've been there, been there. I so sitting like that and took it, then eh. Uh, as I say, we went back to this house and she's messed me, listen, this guy's at this party. He's came back to this house because she was sitting with this guy's sister. So this guy came back and said to her that I was finding her sister. So I was like, ah, right, and I say it's to her sister. As I was there, she's like, what the fuck's she talking about? And I've tried to phone her and she's uh, fucking like, I don't care, nah, shit, and all that, hanging up the phone. And I was like, ah, right, I'm fucking doing that, cunt. So I used to carry a blade on us a lot back at the time. Why, and why, mate? Why, why were you at that time you were carrying a knife? Nine times, isn't it? Nine times, it was just. Just, yeah. a, just a, I've got a blade. It's like wearing oh. a nice watch. A social thing like as if yeah. oh, he's got a blade, he's got it. And in theory, or Was that when you left school or was that even before? No, you was, left uh, school? After, after I left school. So after I left school, and obviously it's a gang fight and that kind of thing. I actually got done with a knife uh, long before that. We went for a gang fight. It was fucking. Had a situation. I was meant to be going to the Dominican Republic with my ma, my bra, his missus and that, right? And the day before that, I went down, it was penalty I was kicking about, so that's on the south side as well. And I went down and like, oh, let's go for a fucking gang fight. Oh, and I'm like, I'm on. And it. cunts have been holding out with blades and shit. Oh, and I've got this mad kitchen chan. knife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've wrapped a track here in my head. And we went up and it's just the daft lines chasing up down the top of the hill. That was all Paws have pulled around the corner. Mm -hmm. And I've been like, ah, fuck. I've I had this big fucking tracky tied around my head. So they've seen me. I'm six foot. Every cunt else about five foot something. So they've seen me post. started had a gun in for me. I've got the boot down. I've flung this like kitchen knife thing in a hedge. It's bounced off the hedge. Hit the gun. It. And I've ran right around a corner. <laughs> And then they've just pulled up, chased us, ca uh, captured us, fucking flung us in the back of the motor. And uh, the Kowani Cotters came back, and because they said they seen us fling something away. But uh, my pal had a lock back, and he threw it in like a garden. So the police went away and they flung this lock back, and they were like, ah, he flung this away. And I was like, ah, it wasn't me flung it away. Being serious, because I'd flung an blade away. Yeah. I had the cheek to feel sorry for myself. So I get. That's still my life. I, I, my mates is really there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is an injustice. Free the, free the Cardone Dwan. But. Uh, yeah, I, for, <laughs> for fingerprints. Do you want to find my... Check your prints, you'll find something else's yeah. prints on it. Yeah. So uh, I get taken to court the next day, but the next, my, my wasn't able to get, I didn't want to like, fucking get them to phone my mother that because I was like, oh, fuck, I've got the jail. But mm -hmm. they were looking for us the next day because I was meant to be on this flight. I had no idea where I was. So I ended up getting papped in a curfew at that point. And uh, that was around about the time I started seeing that mad lassie. So that ended up, the way I'd, I had a pure victim complex, you obviously that way my mum didn't let us out and that kind of stuff. And uh, I built up my head and oh, the world's against me, yeah. this pure negative mindset. So I had a cheek to feel sorry for myself because I got caught with somebody else's blade. <laughs> so I was like, ah, I, I don't deserve to be on this curfew. So I never stuck to it. Right, okay. So obviously after a few bail breaches, I ended up getting remanded for the first time. I'd done a was that moment? I moment, 17 day remand. Because I got remanded, like, uh, it was like 17 what days. What wing were you in? Uh, I was in Iona Wan. So it was, it was a remand hall, yeah. but uh, I was in there and it was like, I get remanded because it was like, I had a trial date. So uh, this was like 17 days before my trial date. So I just went like, right, you're you to the trial. But I, I, I had a cheek to take it through trial <laughs> and everything, man. I was like, I was the fucking mind and all that. Sitting in the dock, like, whose blade was it in? I was like, I'm not a fucking grass, shit like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, mad. I, it was my first kind of uh, blade in that. But I, that was a, a mad experience. Just got a moment for the first time because I'd watched Boys Mind Bars and all that. And, and I'd heard about it, but actually being there, I'm like, fuck, I'm actually in fucking Pullman. And you don't yeah. feel, I remember the first time uh, I was like, I went into the jail, and you don't feel as if you belong there. Nah. Especially a boy like you, like, I'm saying, this isn't, I'm not, this is me. I realise now that I don't fit into this life. Well, well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I realise it. Cause I think but I, it's realised, but you did that, honestly, did. When when when, when you get, you think, God, I, I run about and all this, but this isn't for me. This is this isn't my, my, my life. These to people are like me. To be honest, that is kind of light to me. Uh, what? Well, I get that. Go, right, tell so me. See, with the routine. I always imagine, no, it was like, uh, see what like, you imagine going to jail, it's full of hardened fucking criminals yeah. and that. Just but boys at school. I, just I, I get dubbed up dub, dub, with a boy for Royston, his name was Sean Cregan, and his ma, was, his auntie, sorry, was pals with my ma, because my ma was here, Royston, and he was pure brand new, he was my age, just heavy sound, and I was like, ah, right, there's cunts in here that are just like me, or just heavy sound, then, you did, obviously, have you heard of a Windy Warrior? 
The day I was going to court and all that, this is fucking how immature I was. The boy next door to us didn't have a kettle. And he's like, what, give your kettle if you've got a court. So I was like, I'm getting it. So I was like, I need bother. So I got the kettle and I shat in it. And then I gave him the kettle. <laughs> fucked <laughs> off. And fucking, but I know what happens to the guy I was dubbed up with, man. The guy I was dubbed up with, <laughs> he, he, get the back, the back, he get put in the port for it. He had to clean oh, it. The no, guy I was dubbed no, up with. He'd have been raging, Jordan. Oh, okay, I get out. So I went to court. I get fun <laughs> guilty of trial, obviously. And then they just went like, right, we'll just give you CS. So I got out for then and uh, Ah, yeah, as I Imagine said. you were going up the stairs to see someone got haunted you for shit <laughs> 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 Mate, I'd have started greeting. I'd have started greeting, mate. I'd have started greeting because I was like, I'm out. So I'd just swag him out, man. Oh. Stink fucking gaff humming a shite. But, eh, uh, I so fast forward a bit. I got out for that time. That was my first kind of stint in, but I was kind of like, oh, I've been in the jail. It's like, I know what I'm getting back to. Was, so was, was this, sorry, Jordan, was this while you were still going with that bird? Or is that... So I'd kind of started seeing it at this point. I get the jail and that. And that's when I realised she was, wasn't any good. She was trash, man, because she was just, I was going with my pals and ah, stuff when yes. I was in there. Mm -hmm. And there's no as I felt, there's no as I was in a relationship with her at the time, but... The way but you must have cared about her because you, you, you felt hurt enough when you were getting accused of going with an air bird to want to do a guy well, this for was, that. This was, so this thing with the knife, this happened like a period before that. So say this was about August, this happened mm -hmm. with the, me getting killed with the knife, got a lot of polling yeah, for the first yeah, time. Yeah. So fast forward to like a couple of months later, this is going into the January 2010 when I'd kind of started to end up in a relationship with her. So I take you back to, I was just going back into this house with my pal, uh, his missus, which is this lassie's sister. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. they were getting in and obviously she's saying this guy saying, you're barking into my sister. Yeah. So I'm like, ah, I'm doing him because I had a blade on us. So, and see, to be honest, if I'd never blade on us, I'd have went and got one because I was just yes, that mad. That what I know is, I think she just annoyed me to a point where I'm like, somebody's getting it. Mm -hmm, so yeah. I walked into the gaff. It was literally just around the corner for the house. I'm banging the door and that kind of stuff. And then her pals came to the door and I was like, I tell her, fucking prick to come out here and that. And she's like, listen, go away. So you kind of laughing because she knows mm -hmm. I'm not a bad cunt, you know what I mean? So he's came, he's ended up appearing out. And then I'm like, I fucking go out here and that. And he's like, what are you talking about? Actually, I'm like, you're fucking saying this and that. Then it was a pure back and forth. And he was like 21 at the time, I was 17. And he's just ended up, he's had enough where he's like, I'm fucking punching this cunt in. So he's floating cracked us. And the minute I've just grabbed him, just start stabbing him with his blade. But it was weird, it was like, I was drunk, so. I, I kept, I stabbed him a good few times, but I didn't feel like I was stabbing him. It felt like, I don't know, I was like, I'm not getting him. I yeah. don't know, I thought mm -hmm. it was, because I hadn't stabbed him before, mm -hmm. so I didn't know. I thought it was this big dramatic king. You yes. go, ah, yeah. my God, yeah. what, you seen the films? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So uh, I'm stabbing him in the blade, it's shutting in my fucking finger. See, I've got a skin scar, cut a scars there, so it's shutting. Yeah. I'm opening it while he's punching me about, and I'm fucking, and uh, I remember just stabbing him, then I was in mid swing. And he like collapsed and the blade caught him in the face and it just dragged right down and see that way you imagine chalk and a chalkboard. It was like did, did, oh, did, did no. that. Yeah. Horrible man. He's mad jumped in front of his like, that's enough. And I've kind of like looked at my horns covered in blood. I had a blade in my horn. And then the pal that was at the door saying, listen, go away. She's like, did you just stab him? She started greeting. I'm like, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. Fucked off around the corner, ditched the blade and our garden and back up to the house, washed my horns and just get mad with it. Oh, Didn't think anything of it. Mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. And what happened after that? So the Blassie, I was in the relationship at the time, she's phoned us, like, what the fuck did you do that for? And I was like, ah, he said I was firing at your sister. And she was like, ah, he was kidding on. Like, ah, I knew that. And I was like, ah, you kidding us on? So she'd made it out as if he was being serious and made to me, but he was actually kidding on. So I went down the cunt for nothing. So uh, I've just went back in that cunt's a lot, what the fuck? But cunt's just, we just got on with it, no? I mean, I didn't really take it seriously at the time. Then uh, I went home and I remember waking up the next day and I was trying to convince myself, oh, I just looking stabbed the cunt as if it was like a pure a, mm. a, a pride thing, but it seemed mm. to deep down I was like, oh, what the fuck did I do that for? Horrible. It was like, see that way I was just trying mm. to make it mm. look back then yes. in that mindset, you think it was brilliant. You try to put your mind in with your pals, however, you're in their house and you've still got this young boy that doesn't want to be doing fucking shit like that deep down. Aye. That isn't you. Aye, definitely. And, so you're trying to, I am with you. Aye, you're, you're thinking, you hear the stories, oh, this cunt's a mad bastard, he's done this and that, and you're thinking, I'm thinking, well, Bravado I've done that. On it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I know I was sitting. Kind of like, ah, I, was, I was just trying, I was kicking myself on, and a few days later, the cars came through the door. I jailed this man. The child Did you get fully, fully committed? I uh, charged mm -hmm. a 10 murder, murder, 17. Eh, then, eh, wow, that. let's take that back, by the way. So, you're 17, right? Mm -hmm. You're in a cell, you get the knock on the door. Listen, you realize, fuck, I'm in here for a 10 murder. Mm -hmm. 
what is the feeling? What's running through your head at this point, Jordan, by the way? I didn't really know. It's one of, see, when I went in, when they interrogated us, right? This is the first time I did a police interview. Yes, with the tape. So, so I all that shit. So I thought I could outsmart them. So I made up this cock and bull story. Most cunts no comment. I made up this story saying he came at us with a blade. Or oh, she was all rigmarole. Rather right, than no I comment scenario. Defended myself and all that shit. I'm like, no, I'll talk my way out of this. Fucking buried myself. <laughs> my book. Buried myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? One of the books you used to read, you <laughs> He's done this good cop, bad cop shit, and I literally must have given him the easiest shift they had that week, honest to God, man. So I, I get charged with it, get remanded, cause of my previous with that knife, mm -hmm. back in August, mm, like, yeah, nae bail, nae bail, yeah. nae bail. So I went back up to Pullman, and I was kind of like, and uh, at this point, the day, all the under 18s had moved into Blair House, so this mm -hmm. was a kind of under 18 hall. Mm -hmm. So I moved into there, and I was like, right, I take murdered, but it never really, I don't know the seriousness, it never sunk in. I was like, I'm getting maybe a year or two at this. A uh, two year or something like that. that's what I was like my thinking at the time. Then uh, fast forward, it. obviously that lassie that I was seeing, she'd fucked off. She ended up getting pregnant in our cunt for even get fucking up, got my indictment. Know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't fuck about. But <laughs> she didn't. <yeah. laughs> nah, that she fucked man. She was up the duffer for my fucking court papers were up, man. It was mental. So, uh, but I kind of like ah, right. I just thought fuck it. It never really affected me that much because I think I just thought I've got much more fucking bigger fucking fish to deal with. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So uh, when it was gone to court, uh, I went to the high court. So at that point, I got a QC and I'll explain the process. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. So I was, it was a, a big, quite a, a serious case. And he was like, right, the QC, his name is Tommy Ross. He came and seen, he's like, right, what do you expect? What do you think you'll get for this? And I was like, maybe about fucking two, three, four years, maybe. And he's like, I'll be honest with me. He's like, you're looking at about a six or a seven fucking wow. bottom. And I was like, that's when I kind of went, fuck. That's when I kind of realized I was like, I'm fucked here. So, as I'd said, I had a lot of statements. I'd been stuck in left, right, and centre, and plus I'd stuck my cell in. So, yeah. so like that, he's like, that, trials no looking good. So, when it came back, they dropped it to an assault with severe injury, permanent disfigurement, and danger of life, which is basically. Did that get dropped to a summary then, or was it still no, high no, no, court? No, 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 it was still high court. Right. The only mm. reason, see, when I attempt murder, they need to prove you tried to murder somebody. Right. Yeah. Whereas, assault with severe injury, permanent disfigurement, danger of life, it's well, basically yeah. the mm. next step down. The next it's step just down. as bad right. as yes, I, I, yes, I attempt yes. murder. So, I went up and I just uh, ended up pleading to it. And, uh, when I went up and get sentenced, it was the day after I turned 18, so it was the 10th of June, I turned uh, 18 and the 9th, and I went up and I got four and a half year. So I uh, four and a half year, we have uh, a two year extended, so basically I would four and a half year, I would day three year hit it, and then rather than being out in license for a year and a half, I was out in license for three and a half year. Right. So I got that and I was kind of right, and see, because I'd been on the man for five months, I kind of, I was kind of glad to get it done, because by that point I built it up, right, I could be getting a seven here, I could be getting this, so when four mm -hmm. and a half, the, the QC kind of prepared us for it. So, so the listeners know, when when you go, so when you've done your five months remand, uh -huh. and then you, does that get taken off your sentence then? It gets backdated, so rather than, so say I get four and a half a year in June, or July, sorry, it was July, so, uh, I, was it six months? It was June, sorry, right, I'll say it again. So when I get sentenced in June, I pled to it in May, so it was uh, June the 10th, so I'd been on remand for five months, mm -hmm. so basically the sentence started for the January, for when I first get remanded, yeah. so the 10th of January was the date they were classing it, so that's, you got your back yeah, date, sorry, back got date. It so my lab date mm -hmm. was uh, 10th of January 2013, mm -hmm. so when I went back, I was kind of like, right, I'm in here for the fucking, I remember going back to my cell and it was still in Blair House at the time, and we were sitting down like, right, I better get cosy then. I've been here for the long haul. It's like wow. Back then, 2010, mm -hmm. then like in 2013, it was an odd number to say because it, it's like no, no. If you're talking about 2026, 20, you're like you don't think about it. It's not in your peripheral vision. Mm. Back then, I just I couldn't really see it. So a week later, I turned eight, I, I turned 18 by that point. So a week later, they fired us up to the over 18 so So that was Iona free. That's where all the long termers were. That's like all the big lifers boys. and that. Well, mm -hmm. I, the yeah. big boys all and that. So I went up there, and that's when I my sentence really kind of began. And uh, I, I still had that kind of young guy mentality on, I see that immaturity mm -hmm, I talk mm -hmm, about and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And that's where it get kind of ironed at me because that's like your way older cunts that are doing longer sentence, they can't be arsed with that no, shit. Yeah. And uh, I, I say, I, I take a lot for being in there, man, because I did learn a lot about maturing and just fucking life and shit like Aye, that. Life I mean, skills. Because mm. if you're in your group of people you're hanging about for the scheme, they only know what really what's... But they've only learned what's going on around about them. Like these mm -hmm. are people from all different walks of life and that. Obviously, you get the screws and that. You've got many opportunities to kind of grow if you choose them. So I remember just been sitting at one point. I was like, ah, right, I've got enough few years in here. I was like, ah, right, I may as well fucking just 
hammer the gym and have something to show for it. I wanted to go out and be massive because people weren't going to see us for a few years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've gone back to I want people to see the me. Ego, yeah. The ego, ego, the ego. Yeah. So I, I credit myself with that because, as I say, I had a pure negative mindset <coughs> back then. But I'm thinking, well, that was quite a positive way to look at things. Like I'm not going to waste this time in here. I'm going to at least get something at it. So I started pure just smashing the gym, man. Hitting the gym, uh, worked in a couple of mad jobs. I worked in a, like, I got a job in like the plumbers. It was like we plumbers work part in that. Fanny the bit in there. I got a job in the barbers. I cut hair for a bit, aye. Were you? Ah, I cut hair for a bit, man. I was fucking. I enjoyed that because I wanted to be the Nicky Clark at home, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, I was, I was, I was, I was shite, Say mate. That was, oh, I was shite. You, you never sat in the show and show, did you? No, oh, but I, 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 I get a cut of hair cut once and cracked him, but that's a god. Aye, man, it fucking was something. It was a mad right. So I went up, I was shite at cutting hair at first, right? And then. <laughs> the very first guy I go to get a haircut was a guy for governor and, and uh, it was like and he was since I was cutting his hair I didn't have a clue what I was doing and uh, as I, I fucking as it begun on he's telling me he's like oh God, I just got my ID and that my man and that just got their ID sorted I've not seen them since I've been in my man with me bro and I'm fucking this cunt's hair up and I'm like that shit I had to get the barber to come out and fix it and all that man and I felt terrible so as time went on I eventually got better and I'm like, that cunt's got to be queuing up waiting for me Wait, to cut their hair. And they eventually did, which became a pain in the ass because I was like, this is brutal because you're not getting paid any extra. You're just getting paid yeah. seven quid a week. You know what I mean? So for, mm. imagine I've got a barber. It's only sweet all day. Nicky Clark. So, uh, so, one, so one day this guy came in and I was cutting his hair and that. And uh, I'm like, where you fae and all that stuff? And he's like, I'm fae, fae Hamilton and that. And I'm like, do you know so-and-so fae Hamilton? So I used to go to the gym if I'm in my hall where I cut a boy's fae Hamilton. And he says, I know one of the boys. He's like, I'm actually in a fucking battle these uh, fucking nephew with a golf club I remember this boy talking about it I was like oh, alright and I'm cutting his hair then I started that ego thing coming in I was like am I gonna I can't get back to this hall and go and do a workout with him if I've just cut this guy's hair like, mm -hmm. it's not a, I, I just something in me I was like ah, nah I had to I felt yeah. like I, was, I had to act so but I'd been getting my haircut been alright with him so I was like ah, right I need to do something or something this is going on in my head whilst I'm cutting his hair so I'm like ah, right what the fuck did I do and then I was kind of like I'm going to punch him and I'm like, ah, right, so I'm cutting his hair. So as I'm cutting his hair, I've started kind of getting wee digs in at him. So you kind of prepare him just to, yeah. I'm trying to build myself up to doing it. So I'm kind of trying to get a bit cheeky with him. <laughs> Whilst I'm cutting his hair. So I eventually finished cutting his hair. Then I was like, ah, right, me and me, I've got some shampoo for you, banging shampoo and all that. So he's walked in, his hair's soaking wet he's washing his hair. And I've shouted him in the toilet. The toilet's a fucking bottle. Of, this is the, the width of the toilet. Imagine that's the toilet pan there, that's the door. So I've shouted him into this toilet and he's like, ah, pure buzzing me his haircut. I've just turned around and went bang and cracked him. And it was like, I've never seen somebody look more fucking shocked in my life. I was shocked. And, <laughs> yeah. and then all the kids that were cutting the hair, all stopped and were looking. And then he's kind of like that and walked out and tried to run out the barbers and all that, man. And I, you need fucking the screws. I mean, what the fuck's going on in that, man? But uh, that never came yet. But at the time, it was. Did they like, still like to cut hair after it? Ah, the cut's uh, haircut was a belt. I don't know what I mean. I gave him a good, good haircut and punched him. He must have been like that, no, I mean, for a belt. Yeah, I can't attack next time. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think I get sacked for like a week and then broke back because, as I said, I was a Nicky Clark opponent, man. You kind of sacked the talent. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I, eventually, I get sick of cutting hair then. I got a job working in like the pass, so in the hall it's called the pass, man. You go opened up all day, you get to serve the dinner, so you get all the extras, all that shit. Now I, I was liking that, man. So I got that. Actually, it was a funny story with that as well. So the boy I was talking about for Hamilton, I was pally. He was mm -hmm. on the pass, right? So he had a phone, and uh, he also had roids, steroids. So mm -hmm. I was into the gym at this point. And I was like, ah, right, I want to get one of these roids and that. So he's like, ah, right, I'll give him for how much? So I had name on it in my name. So obviously in the jail phone you can't speak about this shit because they listen to yes. the calls so he's like I'll give you a shot of the phone if you want to go and get a hold of somebody so you'd get nights she would have rec which is recreation so obviously be opened up for pool and all that kind of stuff she would only get it every second night but see because it's a long term haul they gives you a bit more privileges in our hall so on the night she didn't have rec you could get somebody in that was on your side into your room for, mm -hmm. for the period the duration right. of rec I'm with you yeah. So one of his pals was a few doors down face, the boy for Hamilton. So uh, his pal had his phone. He's like, I used to just get a dub up and he can, you can use the phone. So I've got it and I'm phoning my mom asking for money. I was fucking steroids and that. She's like, what, fuck off. Don't was the bolt that. But he's ended up fucking, I'm, I'm phoning cunts pure like that. I was like 18 at the time. So I'm like, ah, I'm sitting in the jail on a phone and all that. As if I'm the boy. Again, got a shot at somebody right. else's phone. That, like, I'm the kid, you know what I mean? <laughs> so he's ended up just going like that, right? The, the boy whose phone it was, he's like, all right, just you keep that in the other night and I'll get it after you tomorrow. Something like that sound. So the next day, fucking, well, I was meant to be doing, see, you would do programs in there. So uh, see, you, 
when you're doing a long term sentence, you can apply for parole. So a long term sentence back then, four and a half years, you would do two thirds, which is three years. Right. But you can apply for parole and get out halfway through your sentence. In order to do that, you need to complete like uh, offending related programs. So basically, like they look at your offend behaviour and you need to they work to address it. In order to, just to show you how class work, IE, and with yeah. people, yes, uh, that the, kind of the, stuff, the right? coursework and stuff. So yeah. I was doing yeah. one called constructs at the time, right. which is decision making courses, right? So I was meant to be going to that in the morning. Never got open for it, and I hit the intercom. I was like, I was going on with this, and uh, the, the, the route, the route basically taking down it's no running now, we don't know what's going on. And I was like, This is fishy as fuck. Something and then I'm down. sure I heard, I was like, I thought I could hear like dogs walking. I was like, ah, Shit, they've got the dogs out. So I just immediately, I went, I had a big bag of protein that hadn't been opened. I grabbed the phone, it was under my bed. Now I put it under my bed at first, I was like, ah, I was, see, I was I looked about, is that the right place bed, to it's, put it's it? It's a mattress like this. It's <laughs> no, like, right, you lift it up. Lift it up. I'm like, ah, what the fuck did I put? I see that way shit. And, and I seen this bag of protein. I was like, fuck it. I grabbed a bag, put the phone in the bag, ripped the protein open and just stuffed the fucking right, phone into the, the bottom of the bag of protein. Yeah, shut it totally. and just sat. About 10, five, 10 minutes later, doors opened, fucking two dugs and two screws like that. We're searching all the halls, searching all the, the rooms. So we'll go search your searching. room and, and, and hear about tales about like nothing. And they've went and searched it, man. So I've, I've been, they, they sit you at the door and uh, they go through everything, man. And this was, I was looking about and like every cunt was out in the hall at the fucking, there was like about 30 handed screws searching the full hall. I'm like, ah, fuck, looking at cunts, man. Cunts are getting caught with all sorts. And I seen them and they've searched the room and uh, it was a woman and they had a wand. One had a, let's see, a metal detector wand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Aye. And one didn't have it. So one was in the search and one was wanding. So my bed was at this side and uh, like my unit and that was on that side for where I'm looking in. So the protein bag was there here, but the guy with the wand was going on the left side and the right. one without the wand was going on the right. <laughs> yeah. So the woman in the right without the wand has got to the bag of protein. She's looked at it and I'm staring at her and she's shaking it. She's shutting it, shaking it about, looking in again, shaking it. She's getting through the thing. Yeah. And I was just waiting and her, putting her horn and pulling it out. Eventually shook it a few times, shut it and put it at the side. Yeah. And then uh, obviously they've ended up meeting in the middle and uh, the guy with the wand, he's better to go down. She's like, ah, no, that's sorry, I've done that side. And they've just turned around, turned around, left the room, put me back in the room, shut the door. And I was just like, ah, what the fuck has just happened there? I'm Madden. thinking how she's no fun it, but when you're shaking a bag, the heavy things go out the bowl. Yeah, 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 like, ah, yeah it, was, it was a full bag of protein. So, oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's quite no, a lot. No, 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 it was a phone in it, no, I mean, so it was like, it was just pure luck. I was sitting in the room, kind of like that. My fucking room was upside down. Everything was everywhere. I was like, did that just, I was waiting on them coming back in, going like, ah, that kid, I think we didn't see that. So, and I've eventually been opened up and turns out, see the boy that gave me the phone, he had two ounces of hash under his pillow, he got caught with it. Yeah. So Fuck. he was on the pass, lost mm -hmm. his job, they came in, opened my door, give and me gave his, you job. his job. Yeah, so they oh, gone. No. And his phone as well. Imagine <laughs> <laughs> so so he'd been like, caught with his phone. Oh, no, he'd man. been caught with it too. So I was actually, at this point in my sentence, <laughs> so I, had, I was waiting to get my low cat, so it's like a, a uh, you're, you, when you get sentenced, you're a high cat. Mm -hmm. So your uh, high category is like basically deemed a high risk. So when you get your low cat, you can go to like a mere like privileged hall. You can look to be getting home leaves and that kind right. of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so within a, uh, I, I think it was like the month before I was like expecting to get my low cat. This happened, so I was shaking it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hard work. somebody's looking after me. So I went and tell him, and he was like, no fucking way. But he was kind of glad I still had the mm -hmm. phone. Of course. So uh, eventually, to have the job in the past and that, uh, that's how I got that. Then about a month later, I get moved to, it was called Mano Free, so it was like a top end hall, it's called. So I get moved over there, and for then on, like, it starts your pre uh, preparation for release kind of thing. So I ended up getting a job in the gym, which was like a mere kind of privileged job. And obviously, I was in my element because I was writing at the gym, yeah. and you would only get it at certain days if you were on like, certain halls. So once I got that job in the gym, you I were had, in all the time. I had my running place. So I had my wee fucking uh, rota and all that. Wrote up doing every muscle group twice a week. I was loving. It. I was buzzing. And then uh, I started getting a thing called SELs, so that's uh, secured escorted leave. So basically, two like, Reliance or two G four S. It was Reliance at the time. They would take you out to your house, and you'd meet your family and that for like two hours. But you weren't cuffed, so you were trusted with that. So I used to go out and uh, obviously I'd get my pals to come up and not. Yes. I, I, I wouldn't go for me empty handed, you know what I mean? Let's just say that. You'd be, you'd be walking uh, back uh, like John uh, Wayne. I'd be walking back. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, so I done a, a good cut of day and then uh, I eventually see that way. I just, I've got a fucking, I had a pure issue with authority at times. Most of my life, I think it stemmed from obviously my mom being a bit but the authoritarian figure, overprotective, yeah, yeah, me, yeah. Go like, you totally right. yes. So, uh, 
in this hall, see, because uh, it was a mere privileged hall, the screws kind of did tend to rip the piss a bit more and just kind of lay down the law a bit more and I didn't like it. So I ended up clashing with this guy, he was a screw, right? But he was like a bent screw, it was funny, it was like, see, I say bent as in like corrupt, so he was like a kind of corrupt screw and it, <clears throat> like for talk's sake, when I first went up there, uh, I was in a double, a double room, a double cell, dubbed up with somebody. I hated that, right? I hate being in with people, I like my own space. But you get single cells, so you can get in one, but you need to put your name down the list because there's people that have been in double rooms before you that have obviously put their name down, you need to wait and name. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. this guy, if you give him a cup of bar of chocolate, he'd bump your name up the list. Okay. So I went and sorted him out, give him a cut of bar of chocolate and he put us in the cell and all that kind of stuff. Did I they hang... call him Fat Dam? <laughs> he wasn't even fat, <laughs> I can't even why it is, fuck. And so another thing I used to do is like, I used to sell the biscuits, right? In the house, so I had, I had like a big, it was like a bed box you put under your bed and it had like 40 packs of bourbons, custard creams, you get like two for three back and all that shit. So I was putting the biscuits, but in that hall, they'd stoked people for doing that kind of thing because people were running up bills and then going into protection, like running up a fucking Wait, chocolate. Wait, protection for the yeah. hell of fucking <laughs> Kit Kats? <laughs> <laughs> free penguins? Yeah, you couldn't make it up, swear to God. So you had to be heavy sly about putting the biscuits or the, yeah. the chocolate because you had one Plenty guy. Had, biscuits. One guy did the tobacco show, one guy did the chocolate show. I had the yeah, biscuits. the biscuits. Aye, so I had the biscuits and then... He tippled it once and he's like, aye, aye fucking, you're nobody in the biscuits which squared me up. So I had to pay him like a fucking tax, basically. Mm, I had to give mm. him a cut of packs of biscuits yeah, yeah. to punt them. So this is the kind of shit that went on, right? Wow. So eventually, wow. but I felt he was a bit, a bit of a bully at the time. Well, I say a bully, he just used to be, time, the, he, the, the I, he was the kind of one that would be, he would do shit, obviously, as you say, he's kind of a bit corrupt in that aspect. So he would do things that, you're like, you can't do that. You're mm, a screw in that. Mm, but he didn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. So I didn't like that. So uh, I'm like, you're the criminal here, not you. <laughs> know what I mean? So I ended up clashing with him a few times. And then it was one of the ones, it was like, it was looking like he, would, he wanted to do the hall. So I remember one night I was playing FIFA and I was, I'm a fucking, honestly God, I'm a chilled guy with a lot of things. See, with FIFA, I'm a savage. I'm just, I'm shite at it, but I'm no shite at it. The game's fucked, one of the cunts. Yeah. But I mean, the game's shite, no me. So I remember getting beat. A bit like my boy, Jordan. Uh, oh, I mean, it's, it's, I, think, I don't know anybody that's cam at FIFA. If somebody's cam at FIFA, they're a serial killer. There's something underneath their flip Honestly, honest to God, man. Some of the states that the Wayne's get in with the, the games now, man. Oh, you were one of them. Some in the rage. I had a, a demonic rage, mate. So this one night I was playing it. So in this hall, they had like an Xbox out in the hall. They'd have like a telly on a trolley. And you could play it out in the hall, but you couldn't take it back into your room and that. It was just for wreck. But you'd wreck every night because you were opened up all day and that's all. So I was playing uh, what, FIFA with somebody and I get beat and I was raging, I jumped up and I like kicked the side of the trolley and like fucking I stormed back in my room and uh, I didn't know what like, one of the screws took a note and put it in like my fucking notes against my name. Mm -hmm. Next day I woke up, the screws came in like, you're getting papped at this hall, slammed the door, papped us at the hall. I was raging, man, took my lamp and all that off me, shit like that. It was, they came up your team handy and I was, it was that time Miko and that, so I was like, you're fucking bastards. So I get papped out, so... My outside, my SELs going outside and that. That take, all get taken away for kicking. Take, so I get flung, flung out the hall because I like two, you get three strikes mm -hmm. and I had two strikes for fucking something daft. I can't mm -hmm. remember what it was. Pardon me. Uh, so I get papped out. Lost my job in the gym. I have been back on my ass. Ended up back up. I own a three in that. Then uh, I think it was like a three month period and you could go, uh, try to go back up. So I ended up seeing time in the gym. I was like, listen, just shoot cons and all that kind of thing, man. So I ended up back up the hall eventually. Good. And uh, it restarted my progression. I got my job back in the gym. Or oh, what I've rigged my role to get that. I had to do fucking complaint procedures or that shit. But I got it. So I was glad I was back to where I was. Then uh, I was coming up for my parole date. So I was, I was, I was kind of, I was hoping for parole. But at the same time as well, it was like. See, cause in there, see, we put so you're 20 at this point, 21, 19, 19 turning 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, so still quite young, know yeah, what I mean? Of course. So, uh, I was going up for parole and that, but back then, it's like, it's probably still the same now. You need to be getting home leaves, you need to be like right out in the community in order to get mm -hmm. parole, which mm -hmm. is fair enough, know yeah. what I mean? They're not just going to mm -hmm. release yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's when I started my SELs back again, that getting out there. Uh, I get not back for parole, so I was like expecting it, but only like eight months, ten months till I was getting out anyway. So in my height, mind, after been in a few years, I was like, this is I'm out soon. Yeah, I was I'm buzzing team my shit about yeah, that. Yeah. So uh, I ended up getting an outside work party. So that was basically a job outside at Falkirk Stadium. So uh I was, Stadium. Football Stadium, man. Well, it was like a facilities fucking mm -hmm, maintenance mm -hmm. or some shit like that. But it was good, man. I went really? out and uh, you would work like one week early shift, so eight to fucking three or eight to two. And the next week you would walk like two to eight. So I was like, in my because I was walking about, like they just dropped you off at the front door and you just yeah. wandered wow. about. Mm -hmm. So times I've, obviously after about a week, I was fucking off to the shop and that because you couldn't uh, leave like the vicinity of the stadium. But 
And they couldn't mistake. You were just pushing yeah. rebounds. Ah, because like, it's one of the guys like you, you weren't were, tagged or anything like during no. that kind of period, no? If, when you were out, you no? literally for, uh, There yeah. was a guy that worked there before me that used to go for sunbeds and all that and haircuts. <laughs> Cut used to go for a haircut and come back. <laughs> well, I mean, a fucking silly bastard. He, he ended up getting caught with steroids and that in his locker. Oh, he, one don't. of the cunts, he just, I talk about me getting too cosy. This cunt was chilling, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I need Sunbeds and all that come back. Did you be telling me for doing it for your Republican stadium? Say where have you been? <laughs> uh, they must have just not turned a blind eye. Oh, yeah. Cunt came mm. back with haircuts and all that. Know what yeah. I mean? It's like a cunt clearly didn't give a fuck. But he ended up getting caught. He, he, he was, it was full of steroids, right? So he ended up getting like jag strapped after this mm-hmm. party. So he was jagging his cell and came back to the jail, yeah. pure hens. Oh, of course. But he ended up putting them in a locker. There was like a row of lockers, right? There was like fucking forty odd lockers. And he just happened to choose the locker that the boss also used. Oh. So it was an empty locker, but he's put it in, but the, the boss obviously went to use it and fun all that shit, all. stuck him in. So uh, I've ended up, go- I think that was his job I got, in fact. Well, I've been. So, uh, but I've been out and I'd see, to be honest, at first I was kind of bored at my nut. I was like, ah, right, it's good, but, no, but I'm like, what can I do? So no long, it didn't take long for I got a hold of a phone. So I got a phone and uh, I, I got up to some shit I didn't. Basically, I ended up getting steroids as well. So I ended up with a couple of hundred D-balls. I don't know if you know them. It's like yeah, five million. blue ones. Yeah, right. so I was taking aim. <laughs> they say that, sorry, they, they say that D-ball was like Russian athletes used to use D-ball. Well, that's I, why folk like bo- doctor, like boxers and athletes still still use that type of steroid. I, but it's oro, isn't it? You I, can't... I, I, it's an oro. Mm. I remember watching something about... Uh, it was this uh, Russian weightlifting squad. Was it Russian? It might have been Russian. It was what that kind of... Part aye, of the the Olymp- aye, and yep, they were yep. taking like 300 a day and all that shit man they were taking it for the fucking Olympics and that then they were they were clearing out their bills and then trying to fucking hide doing mad shit to pass the test it was mental yeah. so I got these and obviously a high dose of these is like 5 a day 50 mm-hmm. milligrams nah, you bought your way up to them and so I, fi- mm-hmm. immediately I was gubbing 15 at a time what? And all that. I was like I'm like it's solid but I was drink loads of water with them as well, uh, man, because they kill your kidneys. Well, that's the thing as well, man. I was I was gubbing 15, right? And then I was gone for a shite. And then I was like, ah, fuck, I've just shat them out. <laughs> okay. So I gubbing off 15. Just mental. Just, I ended up at one point, I, I developed this mad cough. I was like coughing. <gasps> well, man, they had a pure breathless cough. <laughs> yeah. But it was, right, it was 2012, right? It was the same time you ever heard of the whooping cough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this was a big king in the papers and that. So I went back to the jail and they thought I'd caught it and they were trying to lock us lock down and all. Down. And mm-hmm. I was going nuts because obviously I was fucking governed very deep all day. So the events like went his back out and up when he realised it wasn't man. But uh, obviously I was getting up to some shifty stuff out there anyway. And, uh, and this is I, you just about to get released, Jordan, you but, know, Well, I managed five weeks out at this placement and then they came down one day like, ah, right, we've got some in- intel. You're up to no good, basically. Mm-hmm. Just... There was allegations that I was bringing stuff back for the cons and mm-hmm. that, and uh, mm-hmm. they just went like, you're half it, you're getting taken half it, you've got six months left, you'll be doing it in here. Pretty right. much that's what they say, yeah. half like, SEL's half everything. But I got, I got to stay in the hall, so, and I'd, I'd geared up my PT job to go and do this, that, so mm-hmm. I had the cheat to go and try and ask for that back. Well, listen, <laughs> yeah. you've been sacked twice, mate, you're not getting For steroids, yeah. you went back in the gym? Uh, they didn't know about the steroids, that's like, they, right, they knew, right, but they right, didn't know, they never you, caught me. Guy, but with you, with but uh, there was allegations, but when I was out of this fucking workplacement, I ended up battering into this bird. And uh, well, she kind of was, it was one of the ones that was a bit in base sign. I was like, I'd been in a jail two and a half years. So I was the like, Falkirk physio. Uh, <laughs> she was actually the, the one of what behind the bar. <laughs> so, sober, I know. But uh, I ended up batting into her and that, man. And uh, obviously, as I said, I'd been in about two and a half years and I've got that obsessive mindset. So I pure fell in love with her. Not winched up once in that and I was like, I made her. But, uh, you fuck. have said that. So you've, you, you always like that with birds, just right if body. I, if I like them, I Straight away, right though. Into them, yeah. You don't, I, if straight I, away. If I, if I, no, no, <laughs> depends. It needs to be a, a special type of bird. It's not, I, I, I can lose interest really easily. Mm, mm. It's like, oh, I'd need to be like, into them. If I'm into them, then I'm Plus you've into been them. In, you've been in the jail for nearly three yeah, years. Of course you're going to fall in love with the first time. I've seen them dicks and arses mm. I've seen in the showers, man. When I saw that, I just put a tits. I was like, yes, man. <laughs> so I obviously ended up back on the hill, then I get taken off at work party. So I still had her number and I would phone her for the jail and that. And I think she must have been like, what the fuck, mate? No, but at, at first Did you tell her, obviously, you told her that you were in the jail or she knew that? I know, she knew. She knew. Because I had to kid my license because we didn't introduce me the lot because I was. Probably was a turn on. Ah, I Maybe, yeah. I mean. Well, apparently, see the guy, one of the guys I used to work with out there. He was like, it was kind of, it wasn't our supervisor, but it was my supervisor because I'm out for the gym. Basically, like, I watch him, you would mm-hmm, work with him. Mm-hmm. So she used to see him before. So I don't know if maybe she would just try to, I'm going to this big country jail. You're going to say that? After. Aye, that but type of thing. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. It was one of the ones. Yes, it might have been. Yes. But uh, 
I had ended up with her number. She gave me her number, obviously, at the time, and uh, I was texting her when I was in there. Then uh, when I went back, I phoned her and that. But she was chatting to us and that kind of thing. But I think, I don't know if maybe... I had six months left, so I was phoning her like, up here, love, buzzing to talk to her and that. And mm. I think she was just maybe about like, all right. Then uh, one day I phoned her and she's like, ah, listen, the fucking polls have just been away. I don't feel my door about you. And uh, at one point, I remember I was on the phone there, right? Because I used to get her a day shit on the phone. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. But I... I should have known, obviously, that my calls were getting listened to. So I ended up saying something stupid to her. I said to her, uh, there's thing, mate. She was like five foot something. I was like, uh, uh, you're not tall enough to reach my stash. Anyway, something like that, something pure half cuff. Like two days later, screws came in with a bag. And they, like, uh, they opened it and they like, uh, we, we, we listened to your phone call and that. And uh, it was this bag they'd fun stashed in a, a ceiling of a changing room. And it had, like, the bag that it whipped out, it was like a phone, a roll of cling film and a tub of Vaseline. <laughs> 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 so, so they kind of, you want to see him with his face, he's just like, like you're a oh. dirty bastard. So and, and he's like, I've been listening to all your calls, everyone. And I see how he gives that, what is it? I've listened to her fucking day and shit there, so I'm mm. like, fuck. So uh, I get popped out that uh, open hall and I get popped back in LTP, but I'm, I like to, I don't like to settle, you know what I mean? So that was me. And that was, so it was my last few months, and then uh, he, she, that's when she says, post her at my door about you, and I was like, I'm fucked, I'm going to end up. Because see, I always had that kind of anxious mindset, like something will happen. I'll know, I'll You'll get, get it. Because I, I always thought that, because it was too good to be true, because mm-hmm. I waited all this time sitting thinking that stage away, now I'm like, my, my lip dates within reaching distance and I'm like I'm going to get fucked here so uh, eventually it came up and uh, I, I couldn't really get excited about it because I was like it was always that dread in the back of my head so when I did get out I was getting lived in that I got taken down to the reception and uh, I was sitting waiting changing out my clothes and that then the screws came in uh, we have a, a wee chat with you and I was like oh, fuck no, still. they took us in a room it was a woman called Alison I'd always got on with she was like a bad weightlifter she was a screw but she was always heavy brand new but I think she'd started working for the intel bit so she had the interviews and she was just like uh, uh, I was like what's this about she's like oh no it's just a wee interview we do everybody before they get out I'm like right and then she's just asking how was your sentence all these mad questions have you got somewhere to go and, uh, and I was like aye and then she put the boot down she's like uh, right who's bringing in the steroids and then I was like ah fuck and I just what? at that point I just resigned myself I was like ah right I must be getting kept and I was like ah fuck knows man and I just kind of went ah it's me and then she was like ah, I went away in holiday for uh, a month two months there I came back and you doubled in size and I was like ah, it's protein mate <laughs> 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 that I was like, I'd kind of resigned myself I was like that's me fuck and she was like ah right no worries I was like, ah, right that's us and then put us back in the room, then I get let out, and that was weird. that was you. But it was weird, see, when I got let out, I'd never been lived for the jailer for, like when I got out for that remand I was talking about at the start, I got out for court, so I'd never actually been released for the jail. So they take you out to the bit, it's basically where the, the vehicle's going to, so it's like a big fucking shutter thing. Mm-hmm. So they took us there, and we're waiting on it, and it's lifted up, and I just kind of looked at the cunt, I was like, is that, can I is go, that mate? Us? Is that yeah. me? And he's like, I go on, you go, and I just walked out, and I was like, ah, it was fucking, it was bewildering, man, I was just like, ah, I'm out, and it was like, I remember, I'd always, I'd, see, that's the thing about, I don't know how most people are, I think a lot of people are like this, for that full, three, four and a half, three, 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 two, year, two months, I don't know, and every day I thought about getting out. Mm-hmm. Like, you would have dreams, you were out and all that shit, and wake up and you're still in the jail and it would break you, man. You'd have a shite day. Wow. So I'd thought about this day for fucking three years. So once I go out, it was like, it didn't it seem like I felt like I was in a dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like I was going down to my pals and I just, I always thought about what I'm going to do in the day I got out. Jordan, can I ask you a question? Did you ever miss the jail? A lot of, when I was growing up, a lot of the boys that were coming in and out the jail, they always went, you know what, I'm, I, I miss in there. I, I miss, I miss the, the the quietness, the no own fault money, the no worrying about this. It was, it was quiet for them. Did I, you ever miss it? I missed it before I got four and a half year. I, but it seemed I'd done it seventeen days. See, it was a pure laugh, and I was in and out. So I thought, this is brilliant. This is some laughing. Oh, I don't give a fuck about jail. Then I done that four and a half, and had a lot of time to ponder. And as I say, I grew up in there. So mm-hmm. I'm in at seventeen, came out at twenty. So I matured, and I was a, mm-hmm. we can't a lot older on us. So I did boys can, can get institutionalised like that, and that's what they've done, and they're still in and out of yeah, jail just, now. Uh, so uh, happy after you and brilliant mm-hmm. uh, definitely because for a lot of people as well like jail is it's like some people can back to chaotic lives even if they've got a house they're going back to hostels and that shit so I don't blame them for feeling like that know what I mean but I'll get back to uh, a, a lot of the time is uh, phoning in the jail they were, they were always own money they were always uh, do you know what I mean up to no good so when they come out they had all that stress when they were inside that stress went away the, the Friday tick bills went away the money that I owed that dude that was going to plug me went away does mm-hmm. that make sense ah, and, it no, just, of course. and it was just that's a lot of boys do so Aye, so when you got out, what happened when you get out? I was what, what's happened since since you've been out basically from that 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 for that point, that point uh, I got out and uh, 
I just I just I was enjoying myself getting on at the weekends and that kind of thing. And then I started kind of taking Charlie, and uh, that's when I started. I didn't really like right end up any what any jobs. No, nah, not kind of nothing at the nothing at the get go. It was. Uh, at first I was just fucking about, just been a pure pain in the ass to me. Mm -hmm. and I tap my mum on it and fucking going away, go signing on, going and get mad at the weekend. I end up full of steroids and that as well, I end up jagging as Aye, well. Because you were still, uh, yeah, yeah, that's when I was like, I'm getting home, I'm getting full of the jags. So I was doing that, I was hammering the gym, but I didn't have any structure in my life. I was just sitting about, I'd go to the gym every day, but I would just be sitting about the rest of it, then get on it at the weekends. And did you have a bit, we, we spoke about the kind of ego side, it seemed you come out, did you have that badge, did the folk that you were jumping about with, oh, brilliant, never stuck him there, you've done your sentence, that that kind of bit of bravado, or? Me, uh, no, no, that I, I, I don't know, it's like one of the things, you see, by that point, I'd kind of realised, right, I'm no, I, I, I wouldn't stab because somebody again. Because of the maturity. Because mm, you're maturity, an uh, older guys. Because older, aye, cause yes, I've got I people have matured as well, so a lot of people grown up around the nobody ever says it to me, but I don't know if maybe, because some people thought it. I remember I couldn't try to name that mate of me once. That was a fucking weird, a, a mad guy. This cunt, I met this cunt in a house party. And this was no long after I got out. And uh, I was talking to him. He was one of the ones. You could tell he was kind of, he wasn't even cheeky, but you could tell he thought something to himself. And then he's, <laughs> and I was like, he's like, where are you And I was like, I, I tell the cunts I was for penalty because that's where I hung about. Because when I was in the jail, penalty fought with Cardone. Mm -hmm. So I didn't say I was for Cardone in the jail case people thought I was for there. And that, yeah, that, just yeah. that right. Yes, I'm with you. So, uh, he says, where are you feeling? I was like, I'm for penalty, you know? He's like, oh, do you know Big 50? And I was like, what? And he's like, Big 50 for penalty. And he's obviously talking about me. And I was like, I mean, that's fucking me. He's face trapped. He's face trapped. And he's face trapped, you know what I mean? Then he fucking started pure trapping my pal after it and that. But I was pure bewildered. I was like, who the fuck would they? Obviously, <laughs> anybody doing that, anybody's piping. But the fact I was like, me? What the fuck? Because oh, I just didn't see it. But you understand, but like, see, to, in my eyes, I've just done that one thing, but you know, by the time it's travelled out, it's gained terms and legs. And people have made mm, their own minds mm, up, so yeah, people mm. have obviously got it in their head that I'm this type of person. Mm -hmm. But uh, at that time, I was just getting mad with the weekends and that, man. And uh, I ended up getting stabbed. I get stabbed in the head. Uh, if I believe something had happened anyway, let's just say I deserved it, right? Something had happened to him, and then I get, I get plugged in the head. And uh, that's when I kind of realised, look, right, I need to kind of get my finger out and fucking start doing something productive. So I started working on that, getting money in, and then I stayed off the drink that for a bit. Then uh, for about a month, then I ended up getting That's on it. well done, a month, a, uh, lot, a, month, a month, but a month, I just get full of the juice, know what I mean? It's always quite big. So you're just walking one for the fucking hour. Exactly, yeah. it was always something. Mm -hmm. So uh, I ended up hanging about with this group of boys, started kind of doing governing that, and uh, I ended up, that's when I started going right out like fall weekend benders like I was going out Friday to Sunday I'd never done that before that's when I was starting to get that fucking hunger for like just stay yeah. out no way to get home and that kind of thing so that went on for a good period I'd patch the gym put on a big belly and that kind of thing and I'd <coughs> done that for a good while then uh, I played I, I ended up playing the guitar in the jail I picked up the guitar I ended up getting into Oasis when I was in the jail I never really listened to anything like that before so I had a guitar I stole the guitar out the jail and everything man and uh, I had this guitar but none of my pals at the time played it don't mention guitars mm. I think I stole Darns back in the day oh did you? <laughs> 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 I hope oh, it was a good one <laughs> no probably so I did right so, so uh, I ended up so I had a guitar in the house because I wasn't hanging about with a group of people that were into that kind of thing like playing it and that I just mm -hmm. kind of left it and I ended up meeting this group of boys that were in a band. Just one night I went up to this gaff and they were there and I was like, no fucking way. And I, I clicked with them right away. Started kicking about with them and that's when I was kind of, I was, I was hanging about with, uh, uh, like between a few groups of people. Some people were into the mad shit and mm -hmm. these, some people were into the kind of better stuff, you know what I mean? So I started thinking about the boys that were kind of in the band and that and I kind of, they kind of gave us the confidence to start writing my own tunes and then I was like, no, what? Because I always thought to myself like, I maybe it had been an ego thing, like see when I was I started learning the guitar, I always thought to myself like playing live and playing gigs and I'm like, nah, yeah. I couldn't do that. Just visualising. I visualising it, but in my head I was like, I have a word with yourself, the ego was kicking in too mm -hmm. much, the ego was too strong at this point. Right. But when I started thinking about it, I was like, I know what, I could actually do this and uh, it gave me the buzz for it. So uh, it wasn't long after that, I ended up, it was the same house I met these boys and uh, I'd been working in and out of jobs and that kind of thing, but I was fucking a lot of jobs going on five day benders, no turning up and shit like that, so it was quite chaotic. <laughs> Then uh, one weekend, I was in this house, it was 2015, and uh, I was in this gaff on it all night and that kind of thing, and I end up crashing out and I woke up like, in this, this bedroom, and I've got up and everybody's still on it for night four, so I'm mm. like, all right, it was a Sunday. So I was working the next day, I was like, oh, fuck it, Sunday Back sesh. On Back on so I've ended up like, pouring myself a vodka in that thing, sitting drinking it, and it was like five minutes after waking up, and I've heard the door, somebody banging the door. It was the police at the door. 
So obviously the boy who owned the house, he was mad with it, and he's like, ah, get to fuck. He'd his way, and someday there was another guy whose way was there, they were in the bedroom. So they were in the bed, like they'd been out with the Waynes before, then ended up mad and came back to the house. So the Waynes were in the room. And uh, the boss are banging the door and all that shit, and he's like, get to fuck and all that, man. So the collectors are trying to kick the door in, but I'm like, ah, these kids are trying to kick this door in because we're having a party, fucking bams, and all that. It was real raging. <laughs> so we're up about four days trying to barricade the door, and they're trying to kick the door in and all that. And then uh, the boy on the house, he's been like, watch your he just opened the door. And as soon as he's opened the door, I've started flying out like, get to fuck. And as I've pointed my arm like that, I don't know if I pointed or pushed, I can't really remember. I've put my arm out like that, they've just went and grabbed him, ripped us out the door, flung us to the ground. So I'm rolling about with him. And uh, they've ended up going on the radio. And fucking next thing you knew, there was about 30 coppers in this one, this, this landing. So they've came in, jail, just trying to put the restraints on us and that. Carthy just doing the stare. I'm ripping the piss out of them because I'm like that, mad with fucking raging and mm. all that. Took us to the police station. I get taken there. And uh, I was like, ah, right, fucking, they'd done this with police assault, and I was like, no bother, mate, but I was just pure ripping the piss at them. Then they came in, and they, they took all my clays off me, you know, and I was like, what the fuck? I was like, that's a fucking police assault. Mm -hmm. Took all my clays off me, gave us a pair of sand shoes and fucking yeah, mad grey jogging mm -hmm. uh, trackies. And then I got opened up in the morning, I was like, right, this is me getting out, and they're like, you've got a court? I was like, you're fucking, I was like, right, let's go to fucking So how long you'd been out now, John, uh, Jordan? So I got out March 2013, this was November 2015. Oh, six months then. So I still had a... Uh, your full life flashing for something again. Uh, so just about, it might have been October 2015, so I think I had about a year left in my license. Mm -hmm. So, and I'd already had two strikes, so like one I got caught with a bit of gear and fucking the art season, and then I one I think I missed a fucking appointment or some shit like that. So I had two strikes, you get three strikes, you get recalled. Yeah. So I ended up going to court and I was sitting in the court and uh, the doors opened and one of the boys that were in the house is getting put in the cellways. I was like, fuck you, is in here? And they're like, aye, when they caught us, came through the door, man, they ran down the stair, I picked up an iron and done one with an iron. So I'm like laughing, like, you're fucked and all that because there was three of them that came in. So mm -hmm. what's turned out has happened. When the caught have ran in the house, one's like, ran down the stair and this boy, he's picked up a blade, like a sword and then an iron Mad with it, and then at the last minute, he's fucked the sword under the couch. The cotter's running, he's done him with an iron. He's running in the bedroom. This is a living up. Then Brick Flats, don't know if you know what it is, next to Bellas mm -hmm. and Bats. Right. A living up. So he's ran in the bedroom, flung the iron at the window, pulled his trousers down, and went and lay in the bed, kidding on as if he was sleeping. sleeping. Cotter's came in and huckled him. But when the cotter's went down to get the iron, it turns out that somebody had ran in the kitchen and grabbed two and a half ounces of gear of white out the, the kitchen drawer and flung it out the kitchen window. Mm -hmm. So when they went out, there's a fucking two and a half ounces of white and a fucking iron, iron lying next to each other. So there was four, like three of them, including four of us, including me, there was four of us in there. And I was like, you are fucked, man. And the next thing the screws came in at one point, like that, right, uh, said all their names, like, you're in the peti petition court. I was like, are you sure about that, mate? Look, we were all co accused. So I was like, ah, fuck, man. No so way. it was an indictment. So I get taken in. And uh, the boy flung the gear out the window, and the boy done the cop with an iron, get bail. And uh, me and uh, one of the boy's bras, he was done with a breach. I was done with like that police and fire reform act fucking thing. So it's basically a breach. Mm -hmm. So we get demanded because of my previous absolute license. So that's when I went to Berlin. And I was like, fuck off, man. Went up to there, man. And it was I, a fucking, that was a fucking shock to the system. <laughs> Up and bar for the first time. So we went up there. I went up there and see the guy who I'd been remanded with. He'd been granted bail, but the PF opposed it. But the next, so apparently when they do that, they've got 48 hours to provide reason for why they're appealing it. But if they don't uh, give up reason within 48 hours, he gets released. Yeah. So he get released two mm -hmm. days later, and I'm like, ah, fuck, I'm in here myself. I was up there, and that was just, it was different just being in that, man. It was just, it was so different to Pullman. I used to think Pullman was bad, man. I realised how good I had it in Pullman, but in Berlin, it was like, the only good thing about Berlin, there's, there's no discrimination because everybody gets fuck all mm -hmm. no, I mean you get nothing man the screws are pure cunts it's just that 1980s mindset it felt like going back in time yeah. wow and how long were you in Berlin for? so I get I get uh, the 8 day lie down so you get an 8 day lie down then you get back up to get your full committal or get bail mm -hmm. I get fully committed but if you get fully committed you can apply for high court bail where your bail application goes to the high court and they can appeal it so I was in about 3 weeks and I remember there was this thing called Tough Talks and uh, these two body ex bodybuilders, uh, they used to be in about the madness, the life and all that, taking steroids, debt collecting and all that. Yeah. But now they've found God. Mm -hmm. So they get into all the, all the jails and they do like a talk. Mm -hmm. One does squats and the other does talk. I talk, it's mental. Mad. So, uh, and they get their message across, I take it. And, 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 and you remember it, so it must fucking work. Well, because well, it happened in Pullman as well. But I remember that they came into Berlin. I was like, all right, I'll go down to that because I, I do my fucking cell, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
and I went down, I remember sitting there, and uh, one of the screws shouted my name, and I was like, aye, aye. and they're like, you've got bail, and I was like, fuck off, like, I swear, in here's a church, and I was like, no way, and I was like, oh, right, right, you're getting out there now, Brilliant. so I've ended up getting out, I'm looking around, cunts are just staring at me, and I was like, what the fuck's going on? So I've got taken, uh, let out, let out for the jail, and I'm like, that fucking result, man, I'm out. So uh, I've ended up being out, then I had to go back and see my social worker, then she was kind of like, listen, you've kind of fucked it, know what I mean? I was like, aye, but I'm out now, no, I, mm. I never done anything wrong, because this, this victim complex was still quite strong. Well, mind, this so. one, realistically, you've not really done, you never die on the gear, was not yours? Aye, uh, that's exactly that, but it was, it's, it, at some point I still did get involved no, as well, but I, at the time I was like, I've done nothing wrong mm -hmm. that way. And uh, she was like, right, no bother. So I was thinking of it in door. I ended up getting a bit of agency work in that thing. And then uh, I just remember, it was like three weeks after I got out, fucking the door went one night, and I just looked out and seen the post, and I was like, ah, fuck, I just knew right away I'd been recalled. They came in, and they were like, ah, right, you've been recalled, man. So I was like, get to jail and see, just having to go back. Because that was in November 2015, so we had recall. I was like, ah, I know, it was like, I'm back in for 11 months. Wow. I was like, that's, I'm no, there's no day and a half, or no tagging on no, that yeah. shit. So, so right, right back to Berlin. So I, uh, and fucking then, uh, so I had to just do my recall in there, man. That was kind of tough. I made it hard myself as well, because I told myself, this isn't my fault. I've no done this and that. Right, okay. Reality, I had, you know what I mean? I put myself in that position, so. Yeah. You're the victim, yeah. Mm. I was a victim, no, they couldn't get done with iron or yeah. anything like that, no, I mean, it was yeah. me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I tell myself, listen, it was, uh, and I just I made it hard for myself, so I done the 11 month in there. Uh, I got my guitar in eventually, so I just spent a lot of time just writing tunes. So I just, I stuck to that. Uh, I went down to our, our guitar class, I was uh, a guitar teacher, you know, a guitar teacher is a screw that what, takes the class, so he doesn't mm -hmm. have his own back, his name is Alan Dixon. And uh, see the guitar, I'd bumped out a Pullman. So I found out at this point that, see, you ever heard of Billy Bragg? Yeah, the so, singer. Uh, the singer, Billy mm -hmm. Bragg, a right. singer, right? quite a famous English guy. Right. He donated so many of these guitars, a Tanglewood, to all the mm -hmm. Scottish jails. So I didn't know this. So when I went into this this guitar class for the first time with this guitar, oh, he's like, ah, where the fuck do you get that? Because <laughs> <'cause, laughs> he's, he's gave the guitars to cunts and cunts have bumped them. So I walked back in, he's probably thought somebody in the hall. That's a good guitar. I used to have one of them. Well, a tangle with. Ta it's a really yeah, good guitar. Yeah. I've still got yeah. it. It's a guitar I learned on. Yeah. So I, it was nearly a tug of war with this cunt with this guitar. So we didn't get half <laughs> to the, the best of starts, right? <laughs> then uh, it was like, right, everybody in the class, it was like five boys, like, right, everybody's going to do a tune. I've got to do something, you're going to play. So I ended up playing I had been writing for a wee period uh, during this full time I was in and I played in my tune and it was just it just took days right away so you could tell I was, mm, I was serious mm, about yeah, it yeah. so uh, I just spent that full time writing in that and uh, I was in there then eventually the case did go to court it went to court three weeks before my my recall was due to finish so that was another sentence I couldn't really settle because I'm like ah, am I going to get out in this day because as, oh, as far mm -hmm. as I was aware I was fucked mm -hmm. and uh I try to apply, you can apply to get like parole during your recall to get out early, but see when I got my my papers to go in front of the parole board, they put me down as being charged with the, the possession of the gear as well. So I'm like, ah, what the, so I thought I was going to charge with possession of this fucking gear. I'm like, I'm fucked. So this full time, uh, then uh, I was sitting worrying about it, I got knocked back for parole, obviously. So uh, eventually I just went to court three week out and uh, they took a plea deal. So the charge against me and the boys brother get dropped, the two breaches of the peace, right. and they, they pled to the gear and they pled to the assault. Yeah. So that was three or four ago, so I was mm -hmm. like, ah, result, I'm getting out. So uh, eventually I get out, man, then fucking, as I get out, man, it's it just, I end up back into the madness, just getting on it now. Like, just getting I, on it. Within the first few hours of getting out, I was on the gear. Because you were at a stage before you go to jail, you were doing a full weekend then. Aye. It, was, it was full weekends you were doing, it was four days Aye. Uh, at these parties. Aye, that never, so changed, that, that never changed, that never changed. Did I just, you go straight back into that? Right back to it, aye. It was like the very first days, my pal sold it and he was like, and then we went up to the pub and then he's, he's like, bang, 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 bang. And I'm like, like, get, blah, 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 you're fucking, I've been in a jail, you know that man, he's doing big, he's just one eight ones, big daft corners, I'm like, loving it. So aye, after that, immediately I was just right back into the mad ones, man, then eh, Obviously, they playing the guitar, that get fucking flung in the back burner, mm -hmm. or the performing that. Don't get me wrong, I did a couple of gigs, but at that point, when you're just tamming the madness, it's very hard. For me, personally, it's hard to juggle something like that. Uh, I lost the motivation to do it. It's, it's weird, see, I think, because I was having the gear all the time. I suddenly had anxiety and cared what people thought about me, oh, which I never did. Mm -hmm. So I just went, like, oh, no, I'm not fucking writing tunes. I'm and does that, that anxiety that still stick with you, yeah. Jordan, now? Was that? that? Like, I got, like, I didn't realise that, that I suffered terrible anxiety. My anxiety's through the roof every day. I cope with it continually on a daily basis and you know that but that drives from I can't remember really having anxiety growing up 
it drives for that early, between two o'clock in the morning and six o'clock in the morning, your cell in there who sees drives anxiety. Is that where, where you started? That that type of uh, well, anxiety running. See, to be honest, I think my anxiety started when I wasn't taking something because it was like during the week. I don't know. See, it was hard. I couldn't identify it as anxiety. I just thought I suddenly cared what people thought about me. I was starting press cunts. I don't know. I think that's where I stem it for. I don't know. It was stem. Uh, just I remember whenever I came out of the gear, or when I eventually did come stop taking it. That's when I noticed that went away, and I was like, ah, ah that was done to that because I right. couldn't realise it at the time. But uh, at that period, like, before I get the jail, people were taking counsel. You know, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. like, it's like it's like it's like fucking 50, 50. dance there, yeah. prop, aye. Mm -hmm. So it's not even the strongest 50 50, you know what I mean? It was like pure crack, like 90% bends and fucking 10% gear. So when I got up, none of that was a book. I think bends it became like kind of illegal and it was hard to get. So people were just taking proper. Mm -hmm. So I never really took it before then. So when I went back out, it was hammering the prop. So no, he that's was when on it. Aye, starts. That's aye, when you start getting it. Aye, that's when it started going mental. So I was doing it for weekends and then just. Before long, it started to spiral. I ended up, it was becoming every day. Then I started trying to sell it. I came out, I went half it. I stayed half it for two weeks. And then I was like, ah, right, ask me half it now, start selling it. Quit, no working and all that shit. And fucking, the only kind of sell it to him was myself. And the only kind of bumped it was me, you know what I mean? I didn't even pay myself once. That's it. So I ended up having it every day. Then I started taking Valium and that, like people. To I'd, get to sleep. I saw I after a weekend, but they mm -hmm. take a cup of Valium, you wake up, you don't get a hangover, nothing. I'm like, brilliant, man, don't need a hangover. So I started doing that then. As the weekends were ending, when it was getting to the end of the three, four days, I couldn't face reality. that finishing, face reality. So I was taking more and more, then it was getting to a point I was just gubbing them, hoping I didn't wake up, gubbing like 30, 50 at a time and all that shit. No, you were trying to commit suicide, you were just going, I don't give a fuck, there's 20 bang. No having that worry could this kill me, I don't care. That type of thing. Or no, the intention of this I hope I don't wake up. When I woke up, fuck. I was like, fuck. You know what I mean? And it was a few times I actually did go with the intention of like, I'm taking... I'm like going and getting them. Like sitting ended up back. I was getting to a point I was ending up back in my house, myself sniffing and that. Then it was I remember at one point like fuck this and going and getting like fifty half a cunt. I was like, I'm doing it and gobbing all of them. And then fucking thinking that. So you me. just had that intention that. Aye, that, that was the intent. That was the intent. I the intent wake up. that I'm going to take these. Hopefully I don't wake up. Aye. Happy days. Aye. Yeah. Then waking up bouncing. No, I mean waking yeah. up bouncing for like ten days just all the camp. Like times, remember one time what like, taking like fetter or something, I woke up and I'd fucking I must have in the night, must have been sick in my sleep and go up and fucking fell heat first into my unit. I'd have like, scraped my face. Done. So that's when shit really started to get kinda mm. wild man, because I was bouncing for like ten days, but I didn't like feeling bouncing. So I would sit and take gear every day to kind of perk myself back up. Yeah. So that's when it started to go a bit fucking chaotic. I was falling out with cunts and all that, man. Just doing a lot of fucking stupid shit. Ended up on out grands and got to a point. Mm. So I used to look at people, see that ran up heavy gear debts and that. Like, how the fuck do you get in that state? And I got to a point, I was about five grand debt. Just owing cunts money, fucking. Many gram a day, you think you were on by the prop. And remember, taking people who take drugs with no props, fucking. Like you can't be taking a lot of that stuff. Ah uh, no, I, I'm not too sure because to be honest, man, I just uh, I never really fucking tallied up. Depends because at first, see when I had it, when I was selling it, I was just going through like whatever I had. So at, at times I had fifty fifty, and I had like a few ounces in that man, and I would probably get ready an ounce in a weekend. But how much of that was going to me was mm -hmm. probably fucking more than half. Mad. So, uh, That's mad. In terms of. I so well, as I was selling it and uh, eventually ran up so many debts I couldn't get any to sell because I would I would start going with the intention like right, I'll get a bit I'll get a bit off someday I'll sell a bit to make my I'll money back and I'll have my wee bit wee to bit yeah. sell so yeah. it was good uh, good intentions uh, all what suit and paper done it <laughs> wait till Monday morning <laughs> when you're waking up ah uh, no I know <laughs> fucking hell your man. tick bill's got one name on it uh, you're <laughs> you're just, oh where's the next uh, uh, your name for fuck's sake so you think that was the start of you or when you go to uh, jail that last time Berlini uh -huh. that was the start of your mental health issues then big aye, time I would say so I it was just uh, tied in because mm, whenever I went on the mad ones before and I enjoyed it but this point I was just I think Stamping. I was just trying to escape reality and I was it was carrying it into my life I was working I was doing charity fundraising and all that shit man but I was getting in I was patching every Monday and all that shit getting in and I was just arguing with cunts just shit like that man it was bad it was like I don't know, I was a pure dick at the time, man, just that pure arrogant way. Right? I, I, I needed humbled, know what I mean? I could have done me getting an ass kicking, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But uh, as I say, when I started taking the value and that kind of shit, man, and I just started to fill it with all sorts of people, know what I mean? Just went a mad way, just gone mad random gas sitting with people I usually wouldn't sit with. And then I think like, two weekends in a row, I like, went back it to my house after like, been on it, and I couldn't get value, so I had to just ride it out. And it was like two weeks later, the, kind of, the, the effects wore off, and then I kind of, like, I had clarity. 
I, I say I say I had clarity. I had more clarity than I had whilst I was on them. Mm-hmm. And I kind of realised what the fuck, because I had like mad opinions about people. Like, I'd fell out with people and accuse people of stuff that that was dead set like you've done this and then when I'm like ah, wait a minute are you sure mm. I had that question I doubt my head so at this point it was too late I'd fucked it with so many people and then I just I just continued getting on it and just doing my thing I was just trying to escape reality uh, fucking then at one point this is I was shoplifting as well I was doing I, I used to go into shops and steal shit and that so uh, I remember one day I went in and I used to go into Morrison's see just across where I stayed in Cardonald mm-hmm. and I used to go in and I'd swipe Bevy see Bevy down in my tag I'd just fuck it in the bag like that they're not watching the cameras mm-hmm. just stealing bottles of whiskey and daft shit like that mm-hmm. but I was working at the time I was doing charity fundraising but I was it was a pure chaotic lifestyle I was dodging I was carrying a fucking Stanley and all that because I would cunt do and all that shit like that and uh, I remember going in one day it was a Friday and I went in and I swiped two bottles of tequila, fucked it in my bag. I, two bottles of tequila and a meal deal. So <laughs> I started grabbing. But the thing is, I had money to pay for it. I had money to pay for it, but I just, I was like, ah, it was my money to get on it if I, if I bumped yeah, it. Yes, of course. So uh, I went to go and walk out the shop and that, and then the, the security guy shouted us, and I've just ran. And that's, see, I've realised looking back now, I wasn't a very good criminal. No, I mean, I'm glad I realised that I can put my, turn my back in a life of crime now because it's <laughs> morally bad just because I'm heavy shite at it. Because there was two doors, see, like, when you're walking out, you've got the two sliding doors, you can go one out that way, none that way. Yeah. There was one that was shut and one that was open, and I went to the one that was shut. Shut, yeah. So yeah. I ran into the door and he's grabbed this, and I've been like, ah, see, that way. The door, it, it was a slow door, so I've ended up my heel like that stuff, <laughs> and that cunt's grabbed my bag. So I went like that and get the bag off us, and then he's grabbed my jacket, and I've went and slipped the jacket off me, and then I've ran, so he's got my bag and my jacket. But I was meant to be got to work. So in my bag, it, it, charity fundraising. Your ID me, bad, your my bad. ID oh, badge. Yeah. My ID badge, my dress, everything was in it, man. And I was like, ah, fuck, because I'd patched, obviously, a good few days doing the charity fundraising, because I was living a chaotic lifestyle, so I didn't even bother going back after that. Then, eh... Uh, I ended up going the mad one that night, I ended up in a all weekend fucking shock. But oh, uh, like, a boy uh, that works with me messaged me, he's like, mate, the police were in the office looking for you and that kind of thing. And he's like, ah, they wouldn't tell me what it was for, and I, I knew right away yeah. what it was for. Mm-hmm. So I just started ducking and diving, man. The coppers were coming to the door and that, and I just patched him. So uh, as time went on, I've ended up, uh, I've obviously had a warrant for his man, but I just dodged him for about a year. But in that time, I started like getting to the weekend I was like I don't want to do this anymore so you getting on it and that kind of thing but the compulsion was there it was like being possessed obviously if you know my addiction you know what I mean it's like, it's like being possessed like there was times I'd sit and be bored like obviously during the height of my gear addiction days I'd be sitting get up brush my teeth have something to eat and that kind of thing and then I'd just be sitting right what am I going to do today and then we thought my head why do you not get a bit of gear mm-hmm. and it was suddenly done oh. obsession I need to get that I need yeah. to do it then see if I didn't do it I'd start to feel gunning at a downer mm-hmm. so uh that always came in a Friday night. Like when it got to a Friday night, like, how you know it? How you know it? And then it blah, fucking, it starts shaking on it. Mm-hmm. So I was sitting with a group of boys at this time and uh, they used to take a puff. So I ended up just saying, like, he's a few draws and I just trying to take this, mm-hmm. this fucking the thing away. So it did, it took it away. So I ended up substituting that for that. So I started smoking green. I wasn't even enjoying the green either. I was hitting bad jeans and all that shit, but I was just doing it to get something. Mm-hmm. So eventually, Smoking the green, not, I mean, I don't do anything like that now, but back at the time, it, it had heavy benefits because whereas before my focus was on everybody else around me, what they mm-hmm. were doing wrong, when I was smoking green, that focus got turned on me and I was able to look at, right, what am I doing wrong? And that suddenly I felt empathy for all the things I'd done because look, taking the child all the time, you don't give a fuck about anything, including no. myself. Yeah. Suddenly I started to feel emotions, feel emotional, man, and uh, that's when I kind of realised, I was like, oh, fuck, I've done some amount of shady shit. And uh, like, I owed my mom a grand. She took it a fucking uh, a credit union fucking loan to help me pay her gear bill. And I didn't even pay the full bill, you know what oh, I mean? It, it paid one. And you owed her money? Aye, uh, so I owed her, but she was like, I don't want it back, you know that, man? But and, and then I was telling myself, right, I don't owe her that. Then as soon as I was like, in that mindset, I was like, nah, I need to sort this out. So, uh, but it, I ended up getting my selling employment. My uncle got us a job doing scaffolding, so I had a secure job. Good. And at that point, my mental health was still fucking all over the place. And what age were you at that that point, 20, Jordan? This was 2019. 2019, I got this job, so for about 2018. Okay. So Aye. My gear, so for 2016, the, October 2016, I got a bullet through 2017 was the madness, like the yeah. fucking Navarre mm-hmm. and all that kind of shit. Get into later 2018s when I kind of started to curtail it. 
but I was still ending up on mad weekends, but I was trying to kind of stop. Yes. So yeah. you, you, the realisation of that, this isn't for fucking me anymore. Aye, aye. But the, the aye, story, it took, it took, yeah, yeah, it took a while for, yeah. The realisation hit me, but it took a while for the action to come. Of course. So mm. uh, it was getting into like 2019 and uh, I, I was starting to kind of hold down jobs a bit more. But I didn't have any secure. It was always like a couple of weeks work here, a couple of weeks work there. But uh, my uncle got his a job working with a company called SGB, so it was then scaffolding. So uh, I finally had a secure job, which had prospects I'm maybe leading to getting like, my part one and maybe getting future employment, yeah. that kind of thing. So it was at that point, it was strange, man. It was like, as soon as I got that job, see, within the one week, two of the people I owed, one guy I owed like a grand to that I owed 700 quid to, I hadn't seen him the full time since I owed that money. The, within the first week of me getting that job, I bumped, I bumped oh, into one of them and the other one phoned us. And then I was like, ah, fuck, because I'd always had it in my head, right, this is... If, if somebody would be a grand and, and, and they'd patched us for a year, I wouldn't have, I, I would have fucking been yeah. on site. Oh, ah. So I kind of had that in my head and I just ended up saying, listen, sorry, I fucking know everything turned out. I just ended up in a fucking bit of estate waiting to their credit. They're brand new, but they're like, listen, just give you something every week, mm -hmm. every sound. So I eventually started doing that and I was getting good wages with the scaffolding. So I was able to pay them off. Yeah. So I paid them off and, uh, and then I just started going like that, right. As soon as one debt was finished, I was like, ah, right, who else do I owe money to? Mm -hmm. And then I started going for the people that I would look 40 quid stay here and yeah. there and started going through everybody. Don't be wrong, I think I left maybe one or two, but the majority of them I done, and uh, I remember I get my tax rebate. I, got, I went and got a tax rebate and it was like 1,200 quid I got and I just transferred the grand right away to my ma. Brilliant. And I think she'd kind of stopped talking to us at the time, man, because I messaged her on the, uh, Messenger and see that way it's like the wee tick, but it's no mm -hmm. highlighted. Yeah. So I think she blocked us on that, so I had to get my sister to go and message her like that, tell her to check her bank, and then she's like, what was that for? And I was like, I'll tell you, I'd get back. And she was like, oh, thanks. So uh, I feel as if that was kind of the start of like, once I'd done all that, I was kind of like, well, that right. was you starting to get your moral compass, basically, ah, that, yeah, that, that all the amends. bad things you'd done, or the money or the money you owed to people, that was you, uh -huh. you're basically paying that day off. Ah, yeah. so pay, that, pay. That's what the start of your moral compass, like, mm -hmm. the empathy thinking to yourself, ah, right. I need to pay these people off. No, mm -hmm. I mean, I want to, Changed my life, right? And by doing this, that's the start that's of it. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly. That's the way I seen it because I had so much anxiety every day. I woke up. I'm like, it was be a few seconds. I'd wake Horrible. up and, I'm like, and then it hits you. And it hits you. I, like, I, I, I love it, man. And then constantly walking about looking at your shit on that kind of thing. So once I was like, right, I'll pay these bills off, and then I'll be back to normal. I'll be sound. But as soon as the bills were paid off, I was like, ah, it was like, right. You need to kind of sort this out. You need to fucking apologise to this person, that person. So. That, that feeling never went away, but I was really, I was puffing a power of weed at the time. And uh, my mental health was fucking shite. And I fucking was taking steroids. I tried to take steroids again, that man. And my head was up my ass. Wow. I, couldn't, I couldn't do the course. I had to do, I'd done like two weeks. And then it was like, I was going through mood swings and all that. And I was like, no, I don't think I can take these anymore. So I stopped that. But I was getting into work and I was just, it was like a bear with a sore head at times, man. Because Gaffone's got a strenuous job. I was moaning at cunts. I was getting cheeky with cunts. Shit like that, man. I was just a pure bad vibe to be around. I don't know if it was a case I didn't enjoy the job, but I was going in. It was like, see, unless I went in stoned, because times I wouldn't usually smoke first thing in the morning. It was getting to a point, but I was taking buckets before going and doing a shift. Shit like that. I never took, took buckets like twice during my younger years and never liked it. You <laughs> know what I mean? But this is the point I got to. Then, eh. Uh, I was realising I couldn't date first thing in the morning, so I would date after work, but that full date work, I was a fucking pure cunt. Cunt to be around, just a pure eye. <laughs> yeah. A pure bad event, because my head was up my ass, man. It was just all this anxiety that was pouring off of Horrible. all that shit that, what, that happened. Because like, I'd come off the gear, the blues, so I was having to deal with my emotions. That's what they say if you get off drugs, the good news and the bad news is you need to deal with your emotions again. Of course, you need <laughs> you to get your emotions searching. back. Yeah. So, uh, the real you comes out. You start finding out that 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 it's all been bullshit. That right, you've been that's exactly it. And all that, that shit you had in your head, and all these mad opinions you had. You ah, thought it's it was, all bull, man. Uh, just a lot of shit. And, and then like, you're ah, finding the real you for the first time. That's scary. It, but, but at that, at that <laughs> time as well, because I was smoking a power of weed as well. It wasn't. I wasn't truly fucking half ever, and I hadn't really given my head mm. a break. So I actually sat and thought about it at one point. I was like, since I got to the jail in like 2016, I don't think I've had a day or two fucking nobbing on something. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, it's like fucking. You think about that, like fucking hell. It's like a good few years. It's fucking madness. madness. Me. You think about it, but to me it was a norm. So uh, I was still falling out with cunts and that kind of shit, getting mad, fucking digging shit up about somebody said something two years ago and I'd built it into this thing, so I'd fucking fought out with them. But I wouldn't tell them, I just stopped talking to them because they were the, they were the one that was in the ring, mm -hmm. no me, all that shit. So I was still doing all that kind of thing. Then uh, I would say to myself, right, I'm on the green, I'm not taking gear anywhere and that kind of stuff. Then it would fucking, I'd end up 
the green wouldn't be doing anything for us and I'd end up on it at the weekend and I'm like, I'll just take a drink. I just, I can drink, that's all right. I'd take one drink before you know it. It was fucking Back Monday, you know what I mean? It was like, wow, wow. wow. So that was, the green was just kind of leading you into the next thing. Aye, the green, with the green, I was kidding myself on. Like, no, I used to have a problem with the gear. I used to be on it every day, but now I'm only on it at the weekend. So it's, ah, it's all right. Aye, aye, aye. All that got shit with my fucking product. I don't know what I mean. Yeah. So uh, as time went on, I done like two years. I done two years at SGB. You can fucking talk about it as it was a fucking sentence, man. It felt like man. I didn't. It was good for for the wages and that kind of thing. But after a while, I was like, this isn't for me, man. It's. I just noticed I was just a pure drain. I was a pure negative energy. But uh, one night I ended up. I was rough as fuck. It was a Monday, and I just finished work. See that way? I think I'd been up till like early hours in the morning sniffing, but I'd made work. So that way I was like, I'm getting home. I'm getting a munch, and I'm going to chill out. See, mm, man, yeah. I'm just pure defeated, deflated. And uh, I went to the shop, got a Chinese and that, got my munch, and as I'm walking around the corner, there's a police van there and two coppers walking towards my door. But bear in mind, I've had this warrant Warn, for this nah, thing, I think, yeah. that full time. So I'm dodging the police while this is all going on. And uh, i seen them and I've, I've just fucking Back about turned heels. and got off. So I've went away, disappeared for like an hour, then went back and I'm like, all right, I've dodged them. Then uh, I've had my munch and that and just chilled out. Then I fell asleep and I woke up at like 10 at night and I heard them at the door, the police. And they're like, all right, we're coming in that. Then if they'd let us look king, they're kind of breaking into the house. Mm -hmm. So I just patched them. And then my dad's woke up, fucking like, what the fuck's going on? Gonna have his nut open the door. Then they've like, all right. And I just went like, I know what, fuck it, I'm caught. So I got up and then they've, they've lifted us. And then that's when I was like, all right, that's me. I'm getting back up the road, I'm getting to jail. Because I was down a charge with a lockback. See, it's the Stanley, it was a locking Stanley. So they've done us with a lockback. So that was my third knife. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm fucked. And I went into court and it was like a travelling judge that it was in. And uh, Fucking, I get bail. I was like, I had no fucking danger, man. I, like, I get fucking bail. What do pure happy in that? Well, you'd have thought I'd have got a not guilty the way it was. Mm -hmm. Yes, I get bail. Yeah. But I get back out, so I was buzzing. So uh, as I get back out, then I was kind of like, right, that kind of alleviated some of the anxiety because I wasn't pure dodging the post. But that would still come into my mind as time went on, like fucking, what like, this case is hanging in my head. But lockdown eventually happened. And then and I was going through periods. I was trying to get half the green. Now I was managing like a week, two weeks. Then I was ending up back. I was managing like two week half the green. Then I'd end up getting mad with it and end up in the gear. Then once I had a oh. gear come down, I'd start puffing it, make myself feel happy. It was just a pure cycle. And uh, I was locked and came in. I, f I hang with one day. I just uh, I was I seen the guitar because I remember seeing a quote on uh, I don't know if it's Facebook or something like that. And it says uh, this can either be the making of you or the breaking of you. It's up to you to decide what. So I was followed. So uh, I was getting my, my wages paid, yep. 80% yeah, of my house, wages, so I was kind of like, ah, what the fuck am I going to do? Because I remember the day I get followed, I bought four cans of beer, and I, I remember drink man, I was like, ah, is this what I'm going to be doing this whole time? So I, never, I was like, I just flung them to fuck, and then I seen the guitar, and I was like, ah, no, I'll start playing the guitar again. So I started playing it, and uh, I'd wrote like this wee parody, see the Jerry Cinnamon tune, yep. she's a belter, mm -hmm. I'd wrote like, the, the lyrics to I'm on a bender, because right. during my days I've been on a bender. So I, I thought if it was funny, I was like, I'll need to record that and stick that in fucking Facebook or something. So when I've picked up the guitar and playing it again, that's popped into my head and I was like, ah, no, what? Fuck it, I'll fire it up. Sing, yeah. So I done it and I just, I was fucking, I just done it like I just did a video and fired it up. And it, I want to say it went viral, but it went kind of viral, no? Mm -hmm. I mean, it go with 500 odd shares, I think a thousand, I think about a thousand shares eventually, man. But it done all right for anything. I'd never posted anything. No, that yeah, I got you. I, according mm. to me, it's went viral, know what I mean? So cunts were loving it and that. Then uh, I was also getting that wee buzz like, yeah, it's fucking putting something in, people are liking it. Then uh, I think I heard that Coldplay tune, Yellow, yellow mm -hmm. and I started singing the lyrics to, it was for a yellow, is that? And I was like, am I going to do this again? And I was like, oh, fuck it. So I recorded me, uh, I wrote a wee parody Brilliant. that, recorded that, and I put it out, and people were laughing at it like that. And I was like, oh, fuck it, I'm doing this now. So I just started writing mad parodies to mad daft tunes and putting them out every week. And people were sharing them, people were liking them and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So it started to become a wee routine. Every Friday I'd release a tune. And then uh, as time went on, people were just starting to get into it and that kind of thing. And it was it was doing all right. Then I was getting new ideas to try stuff. And uh, as it was, it was coming, just before lockdown, me and my pals met and uh, we went out for a pint. My pals died, he'd just died. So we went out to get like, a wee pint after it. And uh, no, no that day, but like, during that period. And we were sitting and I remember it was in the village hotel. It's uh, no far from here. And uh, I was, I was far for you. I fucking forgot where we were there. I was too into it. Anybody, <laughs> no, it's, tell, it's just next to the BBC building. It's just no far for the tune. Yeah. So uh, we were in having a pint and it was just after a Rangers game. 
and uh, the guy for Rangers TV was like, in the next booth and he was doing like a kind of an interview with somebody but he had like a laptop and a mic and we were like, ah, look how simple that is. No, I mean, we could do that because we're sitting with a few pints and solving the world's issues, you know what it's like? Of course it is. So like, we could do that, so like, let's do a podcast. So lockdown happened, so that kept kind of put in the back burner. But in the time during lockdown starting, I'd started to build a wee following. So for p- releasing my tunes and all that kind of stuff, man, so... By the time it and was it, this helping you, the guitars, ah, the making the breaks? This is, you're thinking, God, this is my going to now. This well, is helping me. This is helping my anxiety. This is helping my addictions. That, well, this is the thing. That's the see when I talk about when I uh, go into the guitar when I'm mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. band. That's mm-hmm. when I was like, I, I want to do this. But I fell away from it when yes. I was getting full of the drugs. So I, I rediscovered it. Brilliant. So I'd, I'd found it again. I was mm-hmm. like, ah, this is what I met be doing. I just, I suddenly felt like a hole was filled, a void was filled. It's fucking brilliant. Brilliant. So... In the time, I think it was like March to August, well, obviously a lot, well, kind of deep into the lockdown to a degree, then uh, I, we were like, ah, right, let's get together, then uh, go and do a podcast. So we started after it was four days, and we just started recording a few trial runs, just sitting talking shit about it, then uh, eventually came time to put it out. So we eventually put it out, and uh, the, within the minute fucking of putting it out, one of my pals is like, ah, mate, I can't have people seeing that. He's like, cause he's taught about getting full of eckies at Tina Papi's bra and all yeah. that shit. And then mm. he's got quite a good job, so I understand it. So by the time he panicked, he's like, ah, we need to take that down, I can't do it. So all like, right, fucking took it down. And me and my pal were kind of annoyed because my pal produced it on. He waited to the minute it went up to say that. So he, we were like a bit miffed because I wanted it out as well. Mm-hmm. So they met immediately. Him and the other boy just went like, listen, we don't want to do this. So it ended up me and my pal. And he, my pal was like, oh, listen, I don't want to uh, be doing the podcast. I'll produce it and you just be the man. So I was mm-hmm. like, ah, right. Because all my life I'd always took up something and got interested in it, then patched it. Mm-hmm. And always with the fears and the usual stuff that comes up. Anxiety, yeah. the anxiety, fear, yes, I, yeah, yeah. what people think and all I've that. I've had it with us. Do you know uh, what I mean? Yeah. A million times before. Listen, are you doing the right thing? Are you are you best place to be sitting here talking about this type of Look at the shit you've done, Jordan. Who are you to sit here? Mm-hmm. But you know what? It's for the greater good. So on you go. Sorry, Jordan. I'd- good. That was your wee, that wee, 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 wee for me to start talking. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, just, just, just with just Jordan was, that, yeah. Yeah. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, just with Jordan was saying, just touching um, further on, but Jordan was saying that it is, it is a fear thing that when you're trying to put yourself out there, right, you, you, you think, well, you want to... It's what your family think, or what you think, or what you think are going to, or what I'll your family it. going to think about you That's and your right. friends, mm-hmm. right? And when you think about them both, you'll do fuck all, Aye. right? Aye. If you patch them, not patch them, but just don't forget, because they'll tell you you're doing, you're fucking off your head to do something like that, right? Or you're starting, say you're starting a business or a podcast or whatever, you're off, you're off your head to Aye, so leave your job and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So your family and your friends are your, your worst critics, mm-hmm. right? If you can get over them, right, and think, I'm going to do this, right, everything else For usually you. works out. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Of course, I feel as well as he, the the more worrying the ideas are, the bigger they seem in your head, means the better the idea is. It's like Bump, I, I find that, it's, it's, it's mm-hmm. that fear's called I resistance. Like that, it's resistance because uh, I remember somebody saying to me, like, I've spent all my life worrying about what they think. But um, at this point in my life, I'm still trying to figure out who they are. Because yeah. it's on head. It's like, you imagine like, like the cavemen back in the day going out to hunt his first animal. Mm-hmm. You've probably have no idea if he was like, you sure you can hunt an animal? You can't fucking catch nothing. But he went and done it. And then as soon as you date a few times, I'm you're like, ah, I can mm-hmm. do this. I'm mm-hmm. the man. Mm-hmm. So at this point, I'd really geared up in a lot of things that like, I'd get interested. I'd done a bit of boxing when I was like 15. i have done it for like a year, then patched it and just went like, I haven't tried. I turned my haunt to I maybe got to a certain degree of uh, skeleton and patched it. So I had this, pardon me, in my head, I'm a fucking failure, this and that thing. So when it got to this stage of the podcast, I was like, I'm not geeing up in this. I'm no, I'm, I don't give a fuck. It's like, this is one thing I'm going to stick to it. So, and I quite like the idea of being the guy in camera, not I mean, that ego thing, not I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm the main guy because mm-hmm. when there's four of you doing a podcast, we'll be each other. It's hard to get a word in, and plus, it's easy to let somebody else take the conversation away, whereas the the, the, the onset is on me to do it. So, I like that idea. idea. So, uh, I just started doing it, man. Then I uh, people started taking to it. Then uh, I was actually enjoying, I realised how much I actually enjoyed speaking to people because uh, it was like a drug to me. 
So I realised that as well, man. Let's see, times I'd have, have a podcast, like, I can't be asked in this a day and all that. Hopefully they can, so this and that. Like, you come in a day, I mate, like, fucking bastard, man, he's coming. So stuff like that. But then I'd go and see within the first 10, 15 minutes of talking, you're like, ah, it's yeah. like, you settle. It's, 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 it's a therapy. massive buzz. It's it's even we do the podcast me. after when you're talking, but see, after it, and then you kind of reflect to that podcast, it's, it's you're less fucking up, it's brilliant. And then you just take nuggets from that podcast and think, what oh, you're taking brilliant. Your yeah. life. I know. Yeah, and you can't. You can't stop talking about it. Aye. You think, when's the next one? Aye. When's the next one? And if, especially yeah. if you want, it's quite inspirational. It's got a lot of pure motivational messages. You're like, I want people to hear this. No, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. That's my big thing that, about it. So when, when you're listening, going back, like there's so many snippets of the podcast that we've done previously. It's even one of them, somebody just that is sitting, neighbor to go, think there's no other option other than to take their own life or whatever that looks like. And that's Monday morning, whenever it is. And they pick up a podcast and you hear, and there's one snippet in there that they go, I'll try that and it stops them, it gives them another 24 hours, another 24 hours, that something can happen that gives them that, pick up that guitar, get like, like go that walk in nature, jump that, that gives them that buzz that they can then kind of no pick up the usual coke, whatever it is, and go to that, go to that. Go mm -hmm. to that tool I, you've got. Can introduce somebody a new way of thinking. And that's all some people that's need. That. That's all. I just that wee inspiration of thought because it's, and it is, it's the relatability. When they look at somebody, it's all one thing looking at somebody and going like, ah, he's amazing, he's on the telly, he's doing dynamite because he came for this, but that's but how he, he's doing dynamite because he's this and that. I'm not like him, I don't mm, come for that mm, area. Mm. But you see somebody that's came for the shit, they've been through it, no, I mean, like, ah, well, he's the same Could have me. been you, could have been sitting yeah. in the same room as you, could have been in that cell at the same time and look at John and that. That's what John Dunn did, that. And that progress, you see that, that's what makes it. Whenever I get the doubts, and don't get me wrong, the day come, but are you best placed to be sitting here using this as a platform? Mm -hmm. But when you get that and, and you get that realisation, you're doing it for freaking right reasons. You're going to be helping out. You're gaining it back. You're gaining a platform for people to set a, a, a community of listeners to really get the tools that are needed to get through life on a fucking daily basis because it's hard. It's all hard. Mm -hmm. Doing podcasts hard. Jumping in cold water's hard. Taking cocaine's hard. Exactly. Like getting, sleeping in's hard. It's all hard. Choose your fucking ain't hard. Aye. That's what it is. You're, you're totally right. You're totally right. And see, uh, I talk about choosing your own hard. It definitely is. And see, I fucking forgot what I was going to say. I was going to actually make a point there and then I fucking totally lost my train Choosing your own hard. Uh, playing the guitar's hard. Aye, playing the guitar's <laughs> hard. I, I totally lost my train of thought. I fucking forgot what I was going to say but there, the thing man. Is, it's, it's all like what, what you were saying, Jordan. I mean, about, about how hard it can be in certain things, right? Or or having that motivation to, to, to do to something. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's Whether that's going to the gym or doing a podcast or or whatever that may be, but it's just having that kind of, I, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. The thing is, it's affecting whatever, uh, us talking about mental health, right, is affecting the community. And I mean, I want to get into the community and I mean, I don't care about uh, anything else. It's your local community, right, and helping them. Mm -hmm. Because they can relate to guys like us, right, Jordan? Nobody, where, nobody's talking. Like, you don't get into a house. You're like, I've never been in a gaff and there's three guys sitting talking about mental health. Mm -hmm. like us no, three are sitting no, I know that. That's, that, why, that, that, that's never going to fucking happen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's why this is... That, like, if this is the only place that people are able to hear it and say, like, I'm no daft, I'm no, like, fucking ashamed of how I'm feeling, because of, then, then that's the best fucking But I can help it. these people to talk about it. That's the thing. And that's why Aye, we're that's, using this platform to do that. Definitely. See, that's what I was going to say. I just remember there. So it's talk about finding your purpose, I find, because see, what my definition of your purpose is, it's something that serves somebody else. It's no just you, or it's, it serves somebody else. It serves the greater good. And see things like this, it's like, that's... We you keep coming back to see when it does get difficult and you're struggling to get by, you're struggling to put in the time. Well, this is getting hard work. It's coming back to that purpose. Wait, this is this isn't just affecting me. I might save somebody's life by doing this. Mm. So that's where you get that motivation and that fuel for. And we're living at a great time. See, we so as much as social media can have its faults and that kind of thing, it can have it's good as well because you don't need to go into like fucking mainstream telly or Sky or whatever the fuck is on the telly to hear these stories because a lot of these stories wouldn't make it on the telly because they're no somebody that's famous it's no the papers having they picked up and that no, we can with you. we decide mm -hmm. what stories go out there and because we are what, representative of like, the working class the people that don't really get their stories told on the telly and that or exactly. on where, where it's mainstream accessible you yeah. know what I mean it's like 
there's no limit to what can be said. There's no there's no dilution of the content. Know what mm -hmm. I mean, you're saying how how you actually feel. You kind of go and what like, fucking it's I don't real, know. It's you kind of go and Good Morning Great Britain and say I'm fucking about to kill myself. So I've been taking too much gear and that kind of shit. It's like they'll know they'll get that out. Know what no, I mean? But it's, this is the thing. That's why people were struggling before because they were looking at these people and it's like fair play to them celebrities and that. They wouldn't talk about their drug problem because they couldn't, because they wouldn't get work, because then it would be a black mark against their name. So it's like, oh, he's perfect, he's doing amazing. But it's like, these podcasts are a great opportunity for people to actually come on and say, listen, this is where I'm at, or this is where I've this been This is at. life, this is real. This, this, is, real. this is what's happening the, uh, uh, everywhere. Do you know what I mean? I used to think my mom and dad and that didn't suffer for poor mental health when I was younger. Like, I used to think uh, it was only me who was annoyed. Dad, they're all fine. Like, if you're, your life looks sorry, you're doing amazing. You've got no reason to feel. No, I'm like, ah, what the fuck, man? It just, mm. That was the biggest realisation I ever had, that everybody does suffer. Of course or they, they do. At some point, suffer. absolutely. Exactly, no yeah. matter how good you've got it. Yeah. You know what I mean? People suffer. And that's, I think that's what another thing is, that's how I was fucking really selfish when I was younger. And I'm talking up to a couple of years ago, I was really selfish, didn't they? Like, he too much of a fuck about... But other people know so much didn't give a fuck. I didn't take any other people's feelings into consideration because I felt worse. I, I always felt worse. I was one worse than you. So, no, I mean, I should get the priority in this. But looking back, I'm like, people are just going through their own battles. People are going through their own shit. Everybody's in the same boat at one mm -hmm. stage, you know what I mean? So that's what I realised. And that's what I try and do. You're obviously doing a great thing with the podcast, trying to get the mental health side of things out as well. And it is, it's getting people that's relatable. But also people that are almost like you talk about your big J and that one. I mean, it's people that are, Maybe no famous, famous, but they're in the public eye to a certain yeah. degree. Mm -hmm. So they're out there. Like some people look at my videos and think you're, you, you, you look as if you're doing well and all that kind of stuff. And there's times I'm putting videos out, I'm depressed at my nut. No, Maybe no, not so much course, recently. You know, I really, because uh, since I've got into recovery and all, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm abstinent. So let's speak just very quickly. Recover. So what you, we were speaking in the way up under, but is it CA? What is it you're, you're in? CA, CA. So I went to NA at first, right? So the very first time I ever what decided I'm going to get after this. I ended up in a bit, it was a Sunday, I ended up on a bit of a mad one. It was, uh, ended up fucking, it was a pop-up uh, near Mary Hill. I ended up with a few of my pals and uh, one of my pals said the Charlie and that, mm -hmm. man. It was like, this is fucking banging strong stuff. Like rocket straight fuel. Straight Columbia. Like, straight rocket, flab flows, uh, Pablo's like, flip-flop. He's like, rocket fuel, so <laughs> most people are rocket fuel. I better take a wee bit less of that than usual. I'm like, he's mere. <laughs> so I'm in the toilet, battering out lines, taking a wee line, putting it in my wee subway card for the fucking later on, all that shit. <laughs> Having it all night, then... Uh, Went home and that, and I was working the next day, and I fucking remember waking up in the morning, like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. Oh, but no. fuck this, I was, I planned it, I was going to go up to Bellas and Park and hang myself, that was in my head. I was like, fuck this, I can't be dealing with this anymore. And then So what was going through your head at that point, what thoughts, I, I Jordan? just woke up, I think it was just, fuck, I'm back here again, and the come down was just so bad this come point, down. it was just really bad. And uh, I was just lying in bed, like, as soon as I get up, I'm going to go and do myself <laughs> in, fuck, I'm going to go to work. So I eventually just dragged myself out of bed and just went to work. And it was weird, man. See, I was in work, obviously fucked all day. But see, when I was coming home on the bus, I was sitting in the bus and I started getting fucking pure anxiety, like really bad. Oh. I started, I like, it flared up. It was like, I've just seen you know, all people run us, man. I was, I need to get off this bus. And when I got up, the bus had soaked that set of lights and the bus stop was just after the lights. So I was kind of like shaking. I need to get off this bus. It was just, I had a fucking, oh, I feel like I'm my feeling head like was just you the It's running through me. Oh man, my <laughs> head was accelerating. I've never felt endless in my life. So I got off the fucking, off the bus and uh, it was weird. I started to feel uncomfortable in my own body. I, I was looking down at myself and I was like, this doesn't feel like me. No, I mean, I felt detached from my mm, body. I, I don't know if it's a depersonalization or mm. something. That's what it felt like. I was like, I was going home and I just, I felt as if, I didn't know, I was like, I was moving it and it was like my horns. I was like, are these mine? It was a fucking weird feeling in there. Oh, wow. Uh, so my, my antidote was that. I went and got a bit of green after something. I was like, I'll smoke a bit of green. That'll sort it. Plus, he'd fucking pulled on a pair of rollerblades and went down a steep hill. That's what oh, I was mental, man. So I, I done that. Then I ended up getting a fucking. I hadn't took Valium since my Valium days, and I was like, all right, a sure Valium. Well, it was my pal. He gave us sort of fucking some Valium or fucking whatever the fuck it was. I say Valium, Valium by name. Valium. Fuck mm -hmm. knows what by nature. Yes. So I took that, and don't get me wrong, it did kind of quell the anxiety for a bit but uh, the next day I was a pure arsehole arguing with cunts and all arguing with my pal who was my boss at the time shit like that I'd just been a pure mm -hmm. dick and then the come down fucking hit us it was bad man and I was like I know what fuck I can't be doing this shit I'm just going back to the way so I'd tell myself I came all this way I was just regressing I felt so that's when I went to my first CA meeting I went to it was in Castlemilk got a bus there and all that man and walked in 
and uh, my anxiety was just through the roof in there. It was just a pure, total new environment because everybody was so welcoming. Mm -hmm. I walked in like, you're a newcomer, and everybody's like, shaking your horn, like, well done and all that. You're sitting talking, I could feel the anxiety flaring up. I just, there was something about it, man, and it, my, my mindset at the time, like, they go, they'll do a bit where the room shares, and they'll go, like, somebody will share their story at the tap table, like, this is a person that's uh, beat an addiction, or like, they're, they're clean as such. We share their story, like where, where they started, where they're at now, it can inspire people. Then the second part of the meeting, like, they'll ask the people that are sitting there if they want to share anything. But they say, like, right, uh, any newcomers we would urge them to, to speak that, no, signed up like that. Jordan He's, grabbed the guitar out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you should say that. <laughs> oh, no, see, it wouldn't have been as bad, but I say, you know, it's like, when, uh, this is how in denial I was, man, seeing I think back, see, hearing some people in meetings now, man, I'm like, that ah, cunts must have been like, what the fuck's this cunt on? So, he would say, like, if, you say, my name's Jordan, I'm an addict. And that's you that's you need to say that before you say it. And you don't need to say it, but that's yeah, what you yeah. say. So uh, I, I was like, I named Jordan, I'm a, a recovered addict or something like that. Because I thought I was uh, I was an addict. I used to take it every day. So mm -hmm. I'm sitting going like, listen, I've made amends to cunts. I used to take it every day. I'm not even as bad now and all that kind of shit. Because that way I wasn't I was wasn't seeing anything in common with people around me. Like there's guys saying I've took smoke crack every day. You know, I'm I'm not smoking crack every day, I'm not like him, mm -hmm. so I must not be an addict. So as soon as the Comden subsided, that was me off. Never went back. Oh, never went back to that same meeting. Then uh, obviously when the next Comden came, I went back again. Then it was starting to become a, a rigmarole, see if I ripped the arse out it, if I ended up on it and that. Because I says to myself, I was like, I know what, I'm not touching gear again. I'll just take a wee acid whenever I'm going to go on it. So I started experimenting with psychedelic, just try to change something for her. And I was like, ah, this is me got this sorted now. And I started going down that route, tried DMT and all that kind of stuff, and I thought that was the answer. I was like, this is the answer to life, this is what us humans are meant to take, this mm -hmm. shit grows out, all that shit, man. But, uh, but there was times I would end up on it, and I'd, I'd end up in the gear as well, so I'm like, ah, this hasn't stopped nothing. See, every wee solution I thought in my head, there was null and void, because I was realising that. So, the times after that I come down, I'd end up going to a meeting, and as soon as I come down and went away, I'd, I'd patch back again. And, mm -hmm. So the first meeting I went to might have been about... 2019, end of 2019. See, uh, see when I say I'm fucking, I'm fucking up my dates here. See, I said I worked at SGB. I think I started in 2018. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't it's, matter. It's, 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 it's story, it's, John. Uh, aye. But, uh, so, this is about 2019. I went to my first meeting and uh, locked in that happened. And I kind of never, they were laughing at that. I, I didn't really know that. I didn't bother with them. And it was probably about last year I started dabbling. What year is this? 2022. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm losing my dates, right? So, to that point, I was like, I'd, I'd go to the odd meeting, then it was, uh, I'd go to a meeting, then maybe go to a couple, then as soon as I come down, went away, I'd patch it. But last year, I started seeing this bird, and uh, I was really into her. She was like just the female version of me, funny and all that, pure nice looking and all that. No, I'm bigging myself up now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I ended up, and this is one of the ones I was into her, so I was like, ah, pure mad for her, but so. She stayed in Edinburgh, so it was one of the ones. It was a bit of a fucking she seen each other. Obviously, we had to pure set dates to see each other, which is fair enough. So I was kind of into her and that, and I remember I'd been seeing her for a few months, and uh, I ended up I had a gig. So I was doing like rap music at this point. I kind of changed the kind of music I was doing. No change. It just started trying something new. So uh, we had this gig in Edinburgh. And I went to it, and uh, obviously I'm turning the half bottles and that, and I'll just drink tonight. I had green on it, I'll just drink and smoke. So somebody's whipped out a bag of gear, I'm like, ah, gee, some. Fuck so I end up the Charlie, man, and uh, end up this, bumped into this mad bird there, and she was obviously into us. And I end up, when I went back to Glasgow, she came up to mine, and obviously whatever happened, mm -hmm, happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I woke up immediately, like, for that, when it come down, like, ah, fuck, what have I done, man? And it's like, I'd always say to with myself, come, see, sorry, John, see every come down that you're having for that point where they get more, sir. Are they getting fucking mere horrible? Cause, cause see, every time I'd had I had a come down, uh -huh. I was like, ah, that's the last come down I'm going to have. And, and, then I would, again, and I would implement this strategy, whatever strategy it was, to make me stay out of gear. So when I'd, I'd wake up, there'd be that extra, you've done it again. So they were gradually, everyone was getting, I'm, like, ah, I'm going to end up doing myself in because I kind of get after this. Yeah. So uh, that time I woke up, I was like, ah, fuck. And uh, I was like, I'm just telling her. I kinda I kinda sit with her after doing this. So uh, I told her right away, then obviously she kinda finished things and that kind of thing. And then I was like, I kinda at that point I kinda really doubted myself. I was kinda questioning myself because I'd always said the first time I've ever done that to the last like went with somebody was I'm involved with somebody. Mm -hmm. And I always thought about cunts, like, why how do you do that? You're a fucking idiot if you do that. No, it was my opinion of people. Then I was like, I've done this. And but when I woke up sober, it was like ah, what the it was like looking at a, a fucking Different person. Mm -hmm. It's done mm -hmm. it, sorry. So, uh, 
suddenly I didn't trust myself because I've got a lot of things that I would say like, mo like morals that I wouldn't do. So when I actually done that, I was kind of like, ah, right, if I've done that, fucking what else am I capable oh, of? Well, that's when mm -hmm. I started to kind of, kind of get the fear. So I made it, I just went like, fuck it, I'm getting in this recovery, man, I'm getting half of it. So uh, I'd met a few people in the recovery time, ended up quite pal with them. So I knew a bit about it. So I went to NA, Narcotics Anonymous at first, and uh, I went to that. But at the time I was microdosing psilocybin. Mm -hmm. So I was like, this will keep me off it. Yeah. I start my tea thing, I need to take something to fucking, I need to take drugs to stay off drugs. <laughs> I mean, that was my mindset. So I was going to that and uh, I was going there, I was going to meetings and that, but as I say, I wasn't doing it right. And uh, I lasted 10 weeks. I didn't have a sponsor or nothing. So you get like a sponsor, they'll take you through the 12 step program. Oh, so when you get in, you get help. Nah, so you yeah, get a sponsor, good. but any is quite different. Like it's any, you need, you need to strike up a, a relationship with somebody because you're going to be burning your soul to them, telling them oh, all your course. shit yes. you've done. So mm -hmm. you want to pick the right person, but I was nearly, really, I don't know, I was going to like one meeting a week, so I wasn't really getting enough time to get to know people and that. Mm. So uh, I done 10 weeks in that, and then I end up fucking back puffing the green again. End up smoking green because I had that wee hanging in my head. See, right, gear's useless to me, it does nothing for me. But green, I can smoke a joint and play the guitar and mm -hmm. I can write tunes. Yeah. On the head. So uh, I started puffing again, and it was like, before I doubted I was an addict, because I was like, these cunts are all fucked. It was honestly God, like, the minute I fucking smoked a joint, it came back with a vengeance. I was like, I was like a fiend. It was mental. That's when I was like, I was like smoking out of control. Like, before I would smoke, see if I'd been off it, uh, the green for a period of time, then I would start smoking again. I would smoke like a tenner about a week. I was going through nearly a fucking quarter a week right away. I was like, as if I've never been off it. I was, it was insane. And I was starting to get pure paranoid thinking I was going to go schizophrenic and that. Like, I, I, I was starting to listen and hear sounds out in the street. And I'm like, did I hear that? Shit like that. Then I was like, question myself, like, mate, where's the enjoyment in this? Wow. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. Aye, so I was starting to get paranoid as fuck. And then it was just getting worse. I was eating a pair of, I've always, I used to have pure bent teeth, right? Up until I was like 20. And I get braces, so I get straight teeth. And uh, so once I get straight teeth, I've always worried about my teeth like that fucking. So since I, when I get stoned in that, I eat a power of shit. I can't control my eating. I mean, crap. Mm. So I'm, I'm going up losing my teeth. I'm going up going, do all this is, this is, and plus as well, as I say, I had the podcast, I had different conference. When I'm stoned, I'm very content to just sit in my ass and do nothing. Do not, no you know motivation. I mean? Nah, no motivation, no nothing. So I'm like, ah, this is, wait. I, I'd convinced myself when I was after I was like, ah, the green used to be such a benefit to me. Then that's when I realised I was like, this isn't worth a fuck. Mm -hmm. So that's when like, ah, fuck it. I'm getting back into recovery. So I ditched all my shit. I tried it so many times. I'd go and I'd give all my own shit to my pal and that. Like, that's me after it. And the next day I'd phone him like, make I come and get that. <laughs> so I was like, ah, just bend it all, give my, the rest of my shit away. I was like, ah, don't even give me that if I come near you. Then uh, I go back into the meetings, but uh, I ended up. I was looking for a sponsor and I think I spoke about it on uh, my podcast. I said it somewhere and uh, somebody messaged me and uh, saying, why don't you ask this guy James uh, to be a sponsor? Basically, James, I had him on my, on my podcast, so he's quite big on recovery and trauma, Good. how trauma has, uh, affects uh, addiction and that kind of stuff. He's been clean 19 years and I was like, ah, and I'm quite proud of him. What's his like, name? James Dockery. Right. Uh, <laughs> Get out of those. I wasn't sure if he was an anonymous side. I mean, yeah. his name. He's been on podcasts. I'm sure he wouldn't bother. No. But... Mm -hmm. uh, so he's been clean 19 years. So somebody says, why don't you ask him to be a sponsor? And I was like, light bulb moment. I was like, where the fuck do I not just ask him? So I asked him and then he's like, ah, right, uh, he phoned us. He's like, ah, right, so what fellowship yet? And I was like, ah, fuck knows. He's like, ah, right, so it's the way it works, like NA and CA, any narcotics anonymous, cocaine anonymous, cocaine anonymous, they both did the 12 steps, but they did it differently. So he's like, ah, the way I learned it was through the big book. So that's like the big book called Alcoholics Anonymous book. It basically... It's called Alcoholics and Cocaine Anonymous, but it's for alcohol and cocaine and all other mind-altering substances. Mm -hmm. So it covers them all, but I was under the impression on oh, Narcotics Anonymous, you need to go to that because I'm smoking green, I'm right, doing this yes, and that. Yeah. Yeah. But he's like, ah, no, it's just a name. So I was like, ah, right, so he's like, I'll be a sponsor, so take you through the steps. So we started that. I've been my sponsor for just over a month. I'm actually meeting them a day. Brilliant. And since... I've been off, I've no drank since that day. First of July, last time I drank, took gear. I've been totally abstinent. Nearly two months, two months at the end of this month. That's Brilliant what I Good stuff, mate. Get Good stuff in there, my man. See, Good since, stuff. man, see, that's what they say. Like, uh, recovery promises you a life beyond your way. <coughs> the streams, man. It's like, everything's been gone right. My way, for instance, like, this is sounds mental, right? See, I was needing a MacBook, right? I've got a MacBook, but I've got a 2014 refurbished one. And uh, I was needing to get... I was like, I want an upgrade to like the, the MacBook Air. So mm -hmm. it's like a grand laptop, mm -hmm. but my, I've not got a grand and uh, my, my credit's shite. 
So I was calling, I was like, how am I going to get financed? So I was contemplating, I asked my ma to get out and finance mm -hmm. and her name and then give her the money, but I was like, I don't want to do that in case I end up losing a job or something like that. And I was kind of like that, because see, try to edit and that Mac where I've got, it's a fucking piece of shit, man. It's so slow. So uh, I got funding, obviously, through uh, Sunny Govan and that. So I went and ordered two cameras. I'm not going to say where in case I get stuck in. <laughs> ordered two cameras. And uh, the way it was, it was during the Royal Mail strike. So the cameras get sent out by Royal Mail, or they get sent out, Royal Mail picked them up and Royal Mail was going to deliver them, but they picked them up as two separate orders. So they went to the depot, the strike happened, then it was like a week later, one gets sent out and I was expecting it, right, this has got to be scattered because of this, there's got to be a heavy backlog of fucking deliveries. So I got one one day and I was like, ah, right, just waiting another one. And the next day I was like, ah, door went post, I'm like, ah, fucking result is my camera. He gave me, he's like, the box is quite heavy, mate. And then I've got it and I've opened it. There's a fucking MacBook Air in it. Visualisation is the key, man. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? And I was yeah. like, where the fuck? These cunts have sent me out this MacBook. I was like, what the fuck? And is that the exact same one you were wanting? Exact yeah. same wow, one. Wow, and then wow, they obviously wow, they fucked wow. up. And then somebody's like, go and sell that. And then you can make your money back. But then I was like, oh, wait a minute, man. Surely they've no meant this and that. And then the next day, door goes, post it again. There's your camera. Brilliant. So I got the two cameras and the MacBook. That's so sorted. that's another thing as well. Visualisation, mate. Me. That's see if, I, ah, see if I ever doubted some key. cunts looking after me. That's what I was like, nah, this isn't it. Sign. This shit is Brilliant. real. Brilliant, I this love shit, it. This shit is real. Then uh, the other day, I, uh, I booked my theory test in like December. So last month, uh, last month I booked my theory. Somebody was in work telling me they booked their theory and I was like, ah, because I'd done my lessons before, but lockdown happened and then I fell away from it and I wasn't working, so I didn't have money coming mm -hmm. in. Then, uh, so when that came back in, uh, I've ended up, and she said that, this woman I was working with, I've like, ah, right, fuck it, I'm going to book my lessons. And I went and looked, put my theory, sorry. And uh, when I've looked, back when I tried to book it, fucking last time, I, I think it was last year or the year before, it was that, it was such a backlog, you were having to go down south to try and get a test yeah. and all that, and then mm. you had to download an app to see oh, if there was, was any cancellations. I paid that, so I just patched it. And I went and looked, and they had availability for tests in January. And I was like, ah, fuck it, I'm just booking it in January, man. Then that way, if I book it, it'll light a fire under my ass. It gives you the motivation to get your but, fucking so, studying done. Uh, well, that's it, man. But the full time of the Christmas holidays, I'm, I'm kicking back. So I didn't start revising it last week. My theory test was... Uh, what day is it today? Saturday? I think it was Wednesday. Passed. Might have been Wednesday. Went up and passed. Yeah. Fucking passed it. And I was stuff. like, I visualised I'm passing this, I'm passing this. And I went up and I was sitting right before I went to the test and I was doing all the mock tests and that. See, when I went to the test, it was the exact same questions. It was like, I was, I was actually into, suspicious. Are you into the secret or in like the visualisation? The, the... I'm into the law of attraction. Right. I've never read the secret. Nah. Yeah. Uh, Do you have I... a vision board? No, what's that? I ah, see, you'll see in the lawyer tracks. But I might have it, I like, might... like, you'd have put your Mac, you'd have went into a catalogue, got a MacBook Air po a picture and posted it up in your vision board so yeah. every morning you're waking up, you're seeing what you're Oh, wanting. right, no, no, so no. It's, I'll uh, need to start doing that. I write, don't yeah. get wrong, I write my, I get up every morning, I write my affirmations and my goals, what feelings I'm grateful yes. for and write mm -hmm. my goals for the day. You so need I to see as soon as your feet hit the ground. I'm big in affirmations, big in gratitude because... As you said, I'm used to waking up the same as you, three minutes in and anxiety takes over me. Right. Who do I owe money to? What have I done at the weekend? Shit, 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 shit. Mm -hmm. See, it, that will never go away from me, Jordan, mm -hmm. that anxiety. However, I day with you, day, I've got keys and tools now right. in my locker that as soon as my hit hits the flare, I need to go, right, my boy's in the next room. He's healthy, he's fit, my daughter, fit and healthy. I'm walking at eyes. And see that wee fucking hang. Sets your day. Makes maybe no, difference. Maybe no good. Your day's still going to be fucked up and whatever else your days are like, but it's a tool that you use that makes that wee bit of difference that allows you to fucking get your clothes on. Uh -huh. you Aye, totally right. That? Totally right. So uh, that's another thing I realised as well. It's like, getting see, MacBooks through. See, I know, getting MacBooks, man. These are fucking motor, man. <laughs> get out of here. I passed my get test. I've got the fucking Range Rover stuck up my lot. I've got Range Rover wallpaper and all that, man. You must like late Range Rovers, oh, mate. Like, I fucking right. I hope the fucking universe gives me it. But uh, that was a. Uh, Fuck, aye, so when I had done a documentary, I just released it obviously about the, the Luke Mitchell murder case. So I went and filmed that. That was a pure after the whim thing. I'd done a podcast with a guy called Scott Forbes. He was a, a lawyer that wrote a book on the case, basically citing all the inconsistencies with the police and, uh, and their, their actions and who you think's done it. So I'd done a podcast with him and it done decent views. A lot of people, a lot of engagement, a lot in the comments. He said to us, let's do a documentary about it. I was like, ah, fuck it, I'll do a documentary. So, uh, I went to do the documentary and uh, I tried to get somebody to film it and then it was coming one of the ones, it was fucking, it was costing a bit of money and just couldn't find the right person. And somebody's like, listen, I'll film it for you, but you'll need to edit it. And I was like, I can edit it. So I was like, I, I like the challenge of doing it. So we went and filmed it and that, then uh, I, I was, but last month I was like, I'll right, get this done for Christmas and it. 
that I've booked a gig to play room two, third of March. Get your tickets. Get your tickets. Ticket. So I booked a gig, right? And I had that. Then I was trying to do a podcast every week. So I was sitting at Christmas. I've been the VIP. I'm telling my eye. The tickets are fees. <laughs> the tickets are fees. You can sponsor us. There we go. The, I was sitting ready to turn my head out. I was like, this is driving me nuts. It was just, I was waking up and I just felt heavy pressure. And uh, usually when I felt this pressure, I would like, smoke a joint, you'll be sound. But then I remember one morning waking up and I just felt it heavy and tap me and I was mm -hmm. like, that's not an option to smoke a joint. So that's when I had to realise, right, you're going to need to develop some sort of method to kind of deal with this. And then I went and sat back and I was like, right, wait a minute, right, so who's setting this deadline of having this document out for Christmas? Well, that's me. But like, I need these paying money, I need these fucking expecting a date, you're just one out for Christmas mm -hmm. so you can sit in your arse at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realised, and I was like, right. So that's when I realised, stop thinking about uh, everything in the future, or everything you've got on tap, just treat it like a hoose. When a brick, he's looking at a hoose, he's not looking at the hoose, he's looking at the brick that's in front of him, and he's putting one brick at a time, but yeah. I know he's got a hoose. Love so it. I was like, just break it down into a brick. So, I was rather than thinking about, I've got to the gym, then I've got to go to work, I've got to do a solid day, I'm just like, go to the gym, do your workout, and just one thing at a time, see since doing that, it's been so much easier. And see, that's the thing, I wouldn't have weigh drugs, I wouldn't have been able to devise that strategy to deal with it. Jordan, yeah, that's, probably, mate, so that's great. No, I mean, you've got some story, by the way. Jordan, we're going to need to get you back on, by the yeah, way, because I don't know what but, but, but the setting, but it's been amazing. I you're, can get you on mine as well, if you Yeah, we can get you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but your, your, your story's not when it's, it's good. Know. It's I laugh. It. There's oh, a lot of laughs, but there's a lot of seriousness with the addictions and that kind of stuff. If you could give one piece of advice to our listeners, what would that be? That are going through the same shit that same we've been shit. through. Yeah, and, the addictions, and the, the anxiety, no whatever maybe it may be, mental health wise. Don't be afraid to ask for help, man. It'll be the best thing you've ever done, man. As I say, this, the small steps cover the greatest distance, man. Just take it one step at a time. Just if you've got an issue, there's help there, man. Go to CA, go to NA, speak to somebody, man. There's always help there available, man, but it will come to you. It might come to you, it might present itself to you, but you need to be willing. That's all it takes willingness, man. So yeah. if you're willing, man, anything's possible. Brilliant, Jordan. One Brilliant. brick at a time. Be a builder. Ah, be in a builder. Jordan's words. That's it, Fucking love it. Be a builder, not Where a Where can bag. people get you in yes, social Jordan media, mate? Us. Where so, can uh, people get you in social media? Uh, on TikTok, get me at Fawaii, F-A-W-A-I-I, -A -I -I, underscore Hivo, H-I-V-O. Okay. I'm on my fifth TikTok account. That's why the name's fuck, because I need to keep changing the names. No, I'm not trying to dodge tax or anything. But I'm not dodging tax. But, uh, <laughs> Instagram <laughs> at Hawaii underscore five o. Same as Twitter, Facebook, Hawaii underscore five o. Get me my podcast, Premeditated Part on YouTube. And uh, that's pretty much it, aye. Okay, mate, we'll put that I'll get in a the link three. Link three. Uh, we'll fucking get the Hawaii in. underscore five o. We'll get the links. Aye, that'll make it easier. That'll make it easier. And say, Brilliant. Jordan, sent me a bio on a pen. <laughs> Try to catch you what I'm saying, know what I mean? Brilliant, Brilliant. Jordan. Jordan, mate. Any final thoughts, JD? No, just wrap amazing. Up? What, what a story. Can relate. Fucking hunters tip so brilliant, Jordan. Thank you for Thank coming you. on, mate. Thanks for having us, man. Help me, help me, and as I yeah. said, help me listen. Thanks, Jordan, mate. Um, for now, we are the Devlin brothers, and we are real, raw, and relevant. Mm -hmm.